Well, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, episode 102, a week earlier. That way it won't conflict potentially with World Files 23 next week. So, what are this week's topics? Uh, second Thought, this is an, old, an older Second Thought being kicked off Nebula, but it's kind of relevant to the Israel-Palestine stuff. Um, seditious car and greed rages as Republicans turn on her. Uh, J.K. Rowling is too obsessed with trans people. Um, several uh, comedy people defend student protesters from people who want to mass shoot them. <laughs> Bernie Sanders points out that Joe Biden's making the same mistake that Hillary did in 2016. Lauren Southern stuff and seditious car and greed fails to our speaker Mike Johnson. I like how I update the EP I is for 102 earlier today and it didn't update for some reason so thank you discord that was a lot of work i had to type in earlier today find all the stuff so anyways what do you want to talk about first <laughs> let's start with um second thoughts and his friends comments all right about um the about israel and palestine so got yeah. kicked off nebula so yeah guys um <clears throat> Of course, this is back in like October, or November, when um the um the terrorist attack on Israel happened. Now we've played his videos before. Second thought, that socialist YouTuber and such. We played a couple of videos. He does a podcast or used to on Nebula with Hakeem, who is a Marxist Leninist Iraqi and some other mm -hmm. socialist I don't oh. know about. And they did a podcast being dumb and all that. And it got they left Nebula sometime after. The Hamas Israeli war started. And why was mm -hmm. that? Well, they were making justifications for killing Israeli citizens. Of course. No surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty bad, I remember, because it's been several months ago since they last saw it. So, let's watch Keppel's video on it. Hey, everyone. So, this is going to be a bit of a weird video. So, mm -hmm. I'm streaming from my hotel room in Las Vegas where I went to TwitchCon. And unfortunately, the hotel Wi-Fi was so bad that all of the streams that I planned to do, I couldn't. And no matter how bad this trip has been in terms of being able to make content while I was out here, what happened to me is nowhere near as bad as what is currently happening to Second Thought. So, let's get into that. Yep. After... 10-7, they've gone, like, really downhill. So this was posted to the D-Program mm -hmm. pod. Although, Hakeem was going downhill the way the before then. That's the uh, Hakeem was basically, has been basically a Stalinist Hakeem for a long God. time, so... so the post and, do you, and do you know that third person? Uh, what was the third one's name? I have no idea. All I know is Hakeem and Second Thought. <laughs> mm, I don't remember who the other one was. It's Second Thought and First Thought just got silently removed from Nebula, creator-owned streaming platform. This was because of a short remark he made on the D-Program livestream last week. As someone who quite likes Nebula, this is fucking disgraceful, especially with some of the other content put on that platform. Nebula still hasn't put out a statement yet. So, it wasn't just Second Thought and First Thought. D-Program also cut from Nebula. Second Thought cut from Nebula. First thought cut from Nebula. Here are what people were saying in the comments. So Quartar27 said, what comment? And the OP of the thread responded, he talked about Israelis being settlers and not having the right to be on Palestinian land and that Hamas's cause was justified. To which another user responds, <laughs> so the truth. Wow. The response by Nebula so far has no been surprise. to remove every single yeah. post asking for what happened here. So as you can see, what happened to first and second thought post got removed by the moderators and again not sure what happened to second thought if he's gone i'm canceling my subscription and the moderators are again removing the post bring back second thought or lose my subscription and once again removed so the context for all of this is that nine days prior to this happening someone posted on nebula Second Thought is openly stating that all Israelis are non-civilians and thus their kidnapping and murder is justified. I Which expect a denunciation of this mm -hmm. from Nebula or I will be canceling my subscription. And let's just play the clip right now to show you what exactly was said. Is this... Oh yeah, if this is the clip I'm talking about, oh boy, this is pretty bad. Mm. So this is a clip from the D-Program Pod's live stream, the podcast hosted by Second Thought Hakeem and Nigopnik. And here's what Second Thought said on one of their most recent streams. 
as well. Thank you very much. He says, did the Palestinians actually take civilian hostage, or is that fake news? Um, I don't care. Yeah, the occupiers <laughs> I don't, are I do not, not civilians. That that is what it comes yeah. down to. Like if imagine, French, like if if sorry, uh, Germany, you know, let's say Germany to, mm -hmm. to be non-controversial, invaded the United States, and they so right off the bat, they're saying that all Israelis are occupiers, and thus they simply do not care if they get taken hostage or if they get slaughtered. It's obviously a detestable statement, and they don't make a clear distinction here between who is a settler, someone who is on the West Bank, displacing Palestinians, bulldozing their homes, and someone who simply was born and raised in Israel who has never contributed to this conflict. They said, you know what? Kind of like Professor Ohio Flowers, remember? Yep. And, you know, everyone knows yep. that's blatantly <clears throat> false. But they, they take your home, they murder your grandma, they bulldoze, like, your neighbor's house. Are those people civilians there? No, they're occupiers. And those, those are criminals. Yeah. That, that is, there are no civilians. And again, remember that these comments were coming after the October 7th massacre committed by Hamas. The people who were slaughtered were at a music festival. These were not settlers mm -hmm. in the West Bank. These were not violent colonialists. These were mostly people <sighs> who were just trying to enjoy themselves. Billions there in the illegal military occupation. Yeah. So that's number one, um, very beautifully put. Number two, uh, much more importantly, um, the track record of Palestinians has been a thousand times better than that of mm -hmm. the Israeli occupation. Despite the fact that Israeli op occupation does not need to brutalize, they already have all the power. Yeah. Um, but they still choose to do far, 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 far worse. Um, the worst that will happen to a person in the Palestinian custody is that they're going to be uh, um, like auctioned off for a prisoner swap, mm -hmm. which is the historic track record also. Yeah. Um, so people were rightfully very upset by this clip. They did not need to downplay a massacre of civilians in order to make the point that they're trying to make. Obviously, the Israeli government, in conjunction... As we pointed out last time, you can point out that Israel, like the creation of Israel back in the 40s was wrong, and a lot of stuff they've done, especially now recently, is wrong and evil. But you, yeah. can, still point, you can still point all that out while acknowledging on t what happened on 10-7 was unacceptable yep. and like i said remember guys the second worst terrorist attack in the world behind only 9 11 that's how bad we're yep. talking about that was yep. absolutely unacceptable and of course mm -hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if we find clips or maybe we did of these guys probably saying that um israel should not exist and all land should go back to the palestinians like mm. professor flower said like, about native what americans you with, uh, <laughs> what are you gonna do with the five million um israelis who are not you got five million Israelis who are there, and you got four million other groups. Yep, just like, but, hey, um, Professor Flowers, what about like the two hundred million white Americans that weren't here? What about all the, mm -hmm. the blacks that were brought here from as slaves, and of course, other um, other people that came here afterwards? We're gonna do about all those yep. hundreds of millions. How many Native Americans are there? Like four million at most. Like, yep. like, like here's something that these people need to realize. Yeah, like, of course, you and me, we're in countries that were founded by colonialism and such. Yep. And, of course, both, as we covered two, I think it was the last episode, did really, really, really bad things to the indigenous oh, people yeah. here. Oh, but, yeah. But here's something that we, we need to, But this is something that these people need to realize. This applies to America, Australia, and, of course, uh, Israel, too. This happened a long, 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 long time ago. America and Australia, hundreds of years ago. Israel. It's been 1948. It's been almost 80 years. It's not like something that just happened at, like right now and you can like have like a better argument to kick them out as like colonizers and stuff. These people yeah. have been here for decades. You're not going to like Israel is just not going to go regardless of if how they are created was wrong. Same goes for America mm -hmm. and Australia. But yeah. we did it. Um, indigenous people. Yeah. yeah. What we did was wrong. But. Hey, buddy, this is our home now, too, just as much as it was your guy's mm -hmm. home, and we ain't leaving. So you're going to have to just yep. accept it for what it is. Exactly. Now, so, you guys got to accept this reality. I'm sure a lot of people, unfortunately, as I've seen, don't accept this reality, but you're going to mm -hmm. have to. Especially since, remember, Israel is probably the strongest country in the Middle East, especially since they have yeah. nuclear weapons. Like yep. if, they, if yep, they have nukes, they can end the world if they want to. Yeah, they will nuke you off if you try to do anything to them. Like, mm -hmm. like just just stop. 
You just gonna have to accept the reality. The best we could do right now is try and pressure Israel to stop doing what they're doing to the Palestinians, which Ooh. Biden, I don't know how well this will work out, but have you heard recently what Biden's doing? Yes, I've heard that he's stopped some of the heavy weapons yeah, shipments. Because he, because he concluded that correctly, as we've been saying for bums, Israel is using American weapons to genocide the Palestinians and do war crimes, yep. stuff like that. So he's threatening yep. to not potentially give them weapons if they continue going with their new offensive in Gaza. So, cool. yeah, we'll see about that. But that's the only thing we can really do. Pressure them to stop. Hamas does need to go, but the reality is we need to have like some sort of peace summit once and for all that Israel exactly. stops genociding the Palestinians, have like yep. a two-state solution or something, and exactly. Gaza and, oh, Israel needs to stop settling the West Bank, which actually yep. is being settled, which these guys would have a better yep. argument in that regard, but they don't bring mm -hmm. that up and such. Yep. They need to stop doing that. They need to leave, and mm -hmm. both... I don't know how damaged the West Bank is, but Gaza Strip can needs to be completely rebuilt, probably by Israel's reparations too, yes. and that would yep. immediately it help the situation. From the ground up. Yeah, because that's much what nothing needs. Left. That's what needs to happen. But of course, you and me, we're apparently too nuanced about it. With the IDF mm -hmm. have committed atrocities, but there's side. no reason for them to say that they simply do not care about the massacre of civilians or people being taken hostage. So here are some so of the much comments for a second on that thought. thread. E-Train <laughs> yeah. 1804 said, Hopefully this thread isn't taken down. Similar threats to this have previously been removed, and I believe that this is an important topic that should be discussed here. To which a user responds, it would be very telling if they choose to remove the thread without issuing some sort of statement stating how they would respond. And as we've seen already, their response was simply to delete all of the posts about this topic. Following up with this, someone writes, Surely the contract creator signed with Nebula has some provision about getting kicked in cases of statements like this. Given the whole image of the platform is we're owned by ourselves, the creators, a weak link damages the reputation of the whole operation it had. I've noticed mm -hmm. content creators quietly disappearing off Nebula before, presumably due to other matters. So creators definitely can be dropped. To which a user responds, So settlers aren't criminals? Or are they just not settlers in Israel? Someone reviewed. Uh, I would say the settlers in the West Bank, yeah, they need to go. Like, yes. yeah, they need to go. The people in Israel, yeah. no. I... No, yeah, pretty much exactly. If it's West Bank, absolutely they need to fuck off. But if they're in Israel proper, no. They, they, most of them have been living, have, were born there. Yeah. Uh, 2024. Like, it's, it's not that hard. It's nuanced people. It's not that by hard. Stating, These people weren't settlers, though. Settlers is specifically a term years. for people who live in the West Bank and the Golan very, Heights. very oh. few oh. who have actually been there the whole time left from oh, yeah. 1947. This person also Even the youngest would be in, the, um, in their 70s and 80s. Just like someone else brought up, too. Israel also mm. needs to give back Golan Heights to Syria. Remember yes. that? We just yep. forgot about that. Thank you yep. for pointing that out on person on Reddit. Yeah, Israel needs to get yep. that These back. These people lived inside the pre-1967 borders. And even if they were gunning down kids in bomb shelters and calling parents to rape their daughters on the phone and then killing them isn't justified ever. By that same logic, that these people are settlers, so is everyone in North America. And, gu and guys, just so you all know, too. For the record, I've seen the, um, some idiot, I, some idiot lefties. Who have said similar things, and also you know, said like if uh, if a Native American murdered me, I'll be like, whoa, good, damn, girl, you did, damn, girl, that was. That was I move. remember. Like, oh. Yeah, uh, but also I was trying to get to the point too. To also to remember, guys. Like, when they did on um, 10-7, that wasn't, like, hypothetically, hey, we're going to go after the settlers in the West Bank since they're selling all that, we're going to mm -hmm. kill them. I would not say it's justifiable, but you have, like, a more reasonable case in that regard, I guess you could say. But they didn't do that. They attacked from the Gaza Strip into Israel proper. Not even yeah. the West Bank whatsoever. They have nothing to do with that. If a native person came into your home and did... And remember... Like, most of the people that were killed were just people at a concert. Like, yes. they have nothing to do with this um, settlement of the West Did Bank. this to your mom? Would you be okay with it? Which, unfortunately, we know that a lot of people on the left would say yes to that statement. So the As, person yeah. who made that As comment was actually... 
Why? Why? Oh. A long time listener. That sounds like so riddled with what actual white guilt. A member guilt. of Second Thought and Keem mm. and you got Nick's audience. Actual and white guilt. an interesting thing about Ugh. this is yeah. that in the Deprogram Pod subreddit, he said, Hassan is the angles to Hakeem's marks. And I'm going to tell you why that's important by showing you a clip of what Hassan thinks about Second Thought. What are your thoughts on Second Thought, good or bad? Oh yeah, of course. Probably my Hassan favorite likes, YouTube well, channel. Likes those clowns, yep. of course. Of like, because he's got. I mean, I've he's been there. Dip shit. I've been there first. Because, he, because he's a, he's just being, he's being as big a dipshit as his dipshit uncle. Yep. Second thought for the <laughs> jump. I've been a fucking ride or die second thought fan. I think, uh, I think he does an incredible job of. Oh. Really, of, Hassan? I mean, deep pro you know, I got to go on the deep program podcast. Like, well, I mean, when you don't have a brain, I'm, I'm not surprised them. you're I'm a huge fan of that. Right now. Yeah. Okay? I know, I know, I know. For so long, everyone's been saying, when are you going to go on the deep program podcast? So here's Hassan, the largest progressive live streamer on the online left, promoting second thoughts, saying he's been there from the beginning. He did eventually go on the deep program podcast. So not only that, but Second Thought himself has said back in 2020, the only way people are finding my video now is via Hassan. Thanks, Hassan. Or, or us when we promote Without you. Without him streaming his reaction <laughs> to my content, my channel would be in a bad spot. He's basically saying that Hassan is the reason why Second Thought has the platform that he does and is able to spread such malicious ideas and misinformation. An important thing to know about Second Thought. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we covered this or not, but he actually defends Russia in the Russo-Ukraine war as well. Of course, yeah. because Cause, he's the pro-genocide piece of shit. He thinks all Ukrainians are Nazis and deserve genocide. Yeah, and he, um, Keppels and Dylan Burns did a video about that too, if you remember mm -hmm. that last year. Yep, I saw that. Is that he is a Marxist-Leninist. He is a tanky. As evidenced by his multiple appearances which means at CPUSA. Which again, how can you be? America. Which again, how can you be a Stalinist or tanky when Russia is not communist? Like, like what? The exactly. Fuck? <laughs> like we know, like well, we know that Vladimir Putin wants to rebuild Russia. He wants the lands of the Soviet Union with the politics of the Russian Empire. Mm -hmm. A conferences. The fact that he's also on a podcast. Like you have an argument to be tanky for China in that regard, but Russia, Leninist. absolutely not. So here's Luna Oi, who mm. herself oh, she no, is Luna Oi. for the oh, Vietnamese no. government. Oh, she put out a video oh, oh, of no. color revolution, oh, God, and you can see in the comments. Oh, second, I don't think most of oh, Vietnam oh, likes so you, you dumb bitch. To <laughs> the oh, they don't. They don't. A lot of them hate her. Yeah, because because remember, remember that if it's anything, if there's even if the word freedom is mentioned at all in any protest ever that is outside outside the genocide core, then um, it's a color revolution. Yep, and guys, just so you know, because we never covered before, Luna Oi is a batshit insane woman from Vietnam who pretty much just wants Vietnam to be controlled by China, which the Vietnamese yeah. do not at all want, to the point where mm, even though they're communists, they're, they're so anti-China to the point that even though they're communists, they align with America. How about that? Yeah. And, th and that's also including the Vietnam War, how bad we ch did to them during that time. <laughs> they are yeah. pro-America because of China's actions. Now let's take a look at what spotting a color revolution looks like according to Luna Oi. So number three, oh, no. color revolution is social oh, no. scandals to provoke uh, people to protest. Oh, for God's sake. And it's sake. important to point this out because uh, in the cases of governments Do we need to hear another Karen? We're going to hear Karen like Green have a meltdown. Do I really China, need to North hear this Korea again? Yeah. Oh, my there gosh. There are many protests. And usually when these protests get big enough, the term color revolution comes up in order to discredit the protesters and say that they are... Throughout Eastern Europe since the 2000s, people remember Georgia and yep. Ukraine multiple times. Because for all of you don't know, mm -hmm. like I'm sure maybe a lot of you know um, Euromaidan back in 2014. Ukraine yeah. also had another revolution in 2004 when they had a um, rigged election. So, mm -hmm. not common too. And... George is having something once again recently, if you didn't hear about that. ...are being yes, funded by that. the United States government or some sort of other foreign interference. This was the rationale used several years ago by the Cuban government when they canceled the Havana Pride Parade, saying that there was foreign interference and that they needed to make sure that it didn't happen in the first place.
Agent provocateurs hold signs with vague slogans like democracy and freedom and provoke people to protest in order to interrupt regular activities like business or school. So first of I mean, all, if you guys support Ooh. that too, so I find it a little exactly. hypocritical that you criticize yeah. others for it. And also, really, you think people in like China or whatever don't want actual democracy and freedom? Like, come on, get out of here. <laughs> in effective protest, these are the things that happen in order to get people's attention. Do I need to remind you, you of Tiananmen to Square? Grind things to a halt. Yeah, I think that Tiananmen any Square activist, massacre. including Luna Oil, oh, right. would agree. Oh, that's with right. That's too point. offensive but to talk about to CCP. I'm sorry. Like yeah. and sorry, I triggered you, CCP. To foreign interference yeah. is very telling for the values that they believe in and what they are advocating for. In Second Thoughts Discord, we finally found out exactly what happened because this is the only place an official statement has been made on why he, as well as the mm -hmm. Deep Program pod, were removed from Nebula. So one of his fans asks, how come First Thought releases this week aren't showing up on Nebula? To which he responds, first thought, second thought, and the deep program are no longer partnered with Nebula. It wasn't a good fit anymore. Is there a reason you and the boys can share, have shared about the split? Just asking since I liked watching the vids there, knowing y'all were getting a better cut compared to my ad blocker covered YouTube. To which Second Thought responds, We mutually decided it was time to part ways. Some Nebula creators wanted me to make a clarifying statement on my position regarding Israel and Palestine. Which you should. And it was just exactly, getting too close yeah. to a both sides thing for me. Which... Oh, 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 that's right. It's, oh, that's right. Point out that Hamas bad, Israel bad. That's two both sides. That's, that's right. Yeah. I forgot. Sorry. Yeah. We're, t we're too centrist, you know. We're too centrist, mm -hmm. apparently. It felt like compromising my it's, principles. Yeah, we're, no, just we're a difference of priorities. Of show. Business yeah. optics versus taking Between a principle stance. Rah, rah, we love so, rah, in other rah, words, rah, rah, it wasn't rah, rah. a, I'm not fired, I quit. To go in further, this is uh. Dave Wiskus, the CEO of Nebula. He didn't make an official statement, but some of the things that he's been liking on Twitter recently paint a very clear picture of where he stands on these issues. So one of the things that he liked is, Palestinians are not Hamas. Hamas is the enemy, not Palestine. And you can see and from fair. liking things like this, mm -hmm. how this I mean, sort of conflict played That's a lot more nuanced than most place. people are going to be. Yep. Hakeem, I wish a lot on the Israeli story would make this very, argument, but no, they don't. To yeah. saying that what Hamas did was an atrocity and condemning them. Here's another thing that the Based CEO of Nebula liked. Exactly. I strongly yep. suggest following Irish news media during this time. One of the only Western countries not overwhelmingly biased towards ignoring Israel's apartheid regime followed up with, and yes, they do report on the atrocity Hamas committed. It's news, not propaganda. And this is important because on the First Thought channel that Second Thought runs, which is his dedicated news channel, he very much downplays the atrocities that Hamas commits. First if he thought, ever has huh? to bring it check up, that up, he immediately mm -hmm. engages in what about it. Second thoughts the as channel if we watch. atrocities committed yeah. by the IDF and Hamas cannot yeah, both be first. terrible. It's really interesting to see where this is going to go, but I think that First people are thoughts. realizing that these tanky content creators have a lot Let's of see. very I think I found heinous it. and insidious opinions that they are very much hiding to their oh, audience and might the public hear sound at large. The background, but play. as these sort of conflicts come up, it scratches at the surface yep, of the I things found their that channel. they say publicly. I'm going to subscribe to it for a moment so I can check it up later. And understand what mm -hmm. they are truly advocating for. Doesn't seem as active as Second Thought, though. But I did not oh. know he had a, a second YouTube channel to cover a whole bunch of stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll have to maybe check out on that because, oh boy, looks like yeah. some of the stuff could be interesting. So yeah, I know this has been a few months ago when they got kicked off of Nebula. But yeah, we all got to say about this. Yeah, you can see why that was the case. Like calling all Israeli settlers and justifying Hamas's horrific, horrific barbaric attack. Yeah, no one can understand why. You, you gotta be nuanced. That reminds me also with Professor Flowers too when she advocated kicking out mm -hmm. whites in um, South Africa, remember? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, every white in South Africa and probably most whites all over Africa, they're just colonizers. They can't be, like, born mm -hmm. there or will only want to immigrate there or something like that. No, they're all just evil and such. Maybe, but they're probably thinking about the same thing about the British with India. That if there's even one British person in all of India, that one British person is oppressing every single Indian or something. 
They're. I, I bet you she she and these idiots are probably jealous that they want to do to the Boers what the British did in the Second Boer War. You know, yeah. Boer and for all of you who don't know, the British during the Second Boer War from the early 1900s, they literally concentrated camps the entire Boer population of South Africa. Yep. Millions of them. Absolute disgusting. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. All right. So now with that out of the way, I guess let's get to the next topic. That will be... Give me a moment. Yep. Number two is... Ah, yes. Seditious car and greed raging as Republicans turn on him. Actually, if we're going to talk about that, maybe we should talk about the first thing that will definitely get her yes. mad too. And that is yes. the Democrats actually saved Mike Johnson, as we yep. covered in the last week. Because that was coming up when um, Ukraine aid and all that came up. Karen Green had a complete meltdown about it mm -hmm. and was threatened to yep. kick him out. And Democrats said that we will protect Johnson if it comes up. And, of course, we discussed and we saw Kyle's really good video, I thought, on whether if they yeah. should or not. And, of course, despite mm -hmm. Kyle's video, we were still on the side of they probably should protect him, at least for right now and such. Yeah. And, they, so, and he did. And they so, did. The, so a few days ago, she actually tried to oust him. And when she was done mm -hmm. talking, they immediately um, ended it right then and there. So Johnson, <laughs> for right now, is saved. Now, of course, now that Democrats saved him, we better make sure that he's on our leash. You're our bitch now. Yep. And if you don't do what we yep. want, if Karen Green does what she wants again, because she's friendly, she's not going to stop. She says she's going to try it again. Oh, she's not. She's going to try. She's going to do it like ever, try and do it as often as she can. Yeah. Because, so, that, because she's a fucking imbecile. And she, um, this is all she does. She just does these sorts of stupid stunts. She yep. never actually does anything to help people. Yeah, so we, they better make it abundantly clear. They better make it job. Yep, better make, they better make it abundantly clear, Johnson. You're going to do what we want, but and if you don't, when she does it again, we're going to vote with her and kick you out. So if you value your job, you fall in line with what we want. Mm -hmm. And they better yep. make that abundantly clear. Can't wait to see yep. what Kyle's gonna say if they um talk if he talks about it again. We'll, like see what he's got to say about this. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's watch. How about Chris Hayes? We've never seen him on here before. Yeah. It's been a long time, and we're gonna see him again too in another video. So mm -hmm. let's see about the video of them saving Johnson. This afternoon, Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene made good on her threat to oust Republican Speaker Mike Johnson and fail badly. <laughs> the form of the resolution is as oh, follows. listen, to this guys. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives to be vacant. Oh. Oh, and guys, those are, I'm pretty sure those are the Republicans booing her. Yeah, those but, are the Republicans booing her. Yeah, there's not that many people in there. I'm sure it's probably the majority of Republicans and all that. And guys, like, I, Karen Green is too stupid to realize that the majority of Republicans don't like what she's doing they're not yeah. gonna support her they were remember guys they were not even happy necessarily when um mccarthy got ousted most yeah. cause remember most republicans actually voted against it it was all the democrats and just a, just enough republicans voted to kick him out they weren't happy about that yeah. now with johnson they're not they're not gonna take a second bullet because they suffered a lot yeah. doing with that crap and they had no problem with it they, they think it's too bullshit and that's why they immediately ended it right then there with democrats held Mm -hmm. This is the Uniparty for the American people watching. Shut up, Karen Green. Uh. <laughs> Order. I think I saw Tlaib out there, too. Mm -hmm. Order. Looks fun banging that gavel, didn't it? Things did not get better from there. After Green introduced her motion, Republican Majority Leader Steve Scalise moved to table the motion, which would affect. And table means kill it, basically. Kill it. Mm -hmm. And within about. I don't know why they couldn't just the say like kill it or something like that, make it more simpler. Yeah. I had to look up what that even means. But yeah, it shows right here. Um. Um. Where is it? Yes. Um. Over two. No, it's over three hundred. I think it was three hundred fifty yays to kill it. And like furry something against it. Yeah, so it overwhelming. Was, it was huge. And, With and, seven saying present. And it's insane too because there was like furry Democrats that weren't even there to vote. And like 20 Republicans. It could have been even higher. Hell, maybe yeah. it got close to 400. But yeah, overwhelming victory and all that. And she looks like a fool. Had the to pass and then some. Yeah. In the end, 163 oh, Democrats. Oh, there it is. There, there it is. Um, the official vote, 359 to 42. 
Yeah. Crush and victory. 196 Republicans yep. voted to save Mike Johnson's speaker. And guys, just so you remember, too, to get rid of McCarthy back in October, it was like almost 220 to like 200. It was very close. Mm. Yep. And only because Democrats were get helped that time. This time, they're Push helping it. Johnson. According to House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, it was the right thing for his caucus to do. Our decision to stop Marjorie Taylor Greene from plunging the House of Representatives and the country into further chaos is rooted in I don't know if it would be chaotic. It would be kind of funny. <laughs> to solve problems for everyday Americans. <laughs> we had a fun time laughing at Republicans when they did this last time. Yeah. <laughs> we need more common sense. And Jeff. And, heck, and less chaos and Jeff, in Washington, D.C. You know damn well this helps Democrats no matter what. Marjorie Taylor Green so I act like, oh my God, it's such a bad thing of what Karen Green's doing. You would benefit for it. Agents. Hell, there's a, a solid chance maybe if she did kick um Johnson out, that maybe you could be speaker potentially. Like, mm -hmm. that is a possibility, guys. House Democrats are change agents. Mm -hmm. Joining me now, NBC News senior national political reporter Sahil Kapoor, who's been all over Capitol Hill covering the effort to oust Speaker Johnson. Sahil, first, just as someone who's been embedded in this story, what do you think of today's outcome? Well, Chris, it was a rather extraordinary and somewhat theatrical series of events here. The outcome has, been, uh, has not been in doubt. You know, it's been very clear for a while that Democrats would provide the votes to table this motion, essentially kill uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's effort to oust Mike Johnson. But it is also the first time in modern history we've seen a Speaker of the House have to rely on votes from the minority party to prevent, uh, you know, to save his job, to uh, avoid himself getting overthrown. So that was notable. And that was ultimately why Marjorie Taylor Greene did this. She wanted to make a point that Mike Johnson cannot survive in that job without the support of Democrats. Now, technically, this wasn't a vote to overthrow. This is a vote to table a vote to overthrow and that distinction. It's, it's parliamentary gibberish, but it, it was important to Democrats because they can go home and say they just prevented Marjorie Taylor right. Greene from getting her vote. That's very important because 163 Democrats effectively voted to save Mike Johnson, you know, in this job, a man who they've described as an election denier, dangerous to democracy, who, you know, earlier today they accused of scaremongering with this election <clears throat> bill, standing with a bunch of uh, other election deniers as well. So what Democrats are trying to do here is present themselves as the adults in the room, to present themselves as team normal against a bunch of squabbling children and extremists. And that's a narrative that they hope to ride this fall, Chris. Yeah, the other thing I would note here is that unlike McCarthy, Johnson clearly negotiated with them. And was, when I was covering the McCarthy stuff and we were on air together, what was so clear is the Democrats just didn't trust the guy. And he also just never reached out. He never said, hey, look, they're going to try to come after me. Let's strike some kind of a deal. I don't know if there was an explicit deal between Johnson and Democrats, but what is clear is that there are open lines of communication and some sort of traditional and transactional kind of deal making happening. Well, there's certainly no personal animosity. I mean, he doesn't have Johnson a choice. It was to Kevin McCarthy, Chris, yeah. and that's for a whole bunch of reasons. But no, there Johnson was no explicit deal. Very you know, we've, we've, you know, talked to a oh, lot of members absolutely. about this. We've talked to a lot of sources and uh, on this. And better we've make sure he stays on that short any, leash. You know, a signs yep. of, of a, a handshake deal that was made. Ultimately, what convinced Democrats, you know, to save Mike Johnson was the fact that Mike Johnson followed through with certain promises, like uh, funding the government on the basis of that bipartisan deal, yep. like putting Ukraine aid on the floor, which was a very difficult thing for him to do. He went up against the Marjorie Taylor Greene wing and in many cases the MAGA wing of his party and did that vote. He also did the FISA vote against, uh, you know, a coalition of right wing and uh, some progressive, uh, you know, members who wanted changes to the surveillance law. So what Democratic leaders Wait, saw was a speaker that was essentially giving them the bipartisan votes that they wanted. And to look at that and say, you know, from now until the rest of the year, there's not a whole lot of must-pass bills that have to be done. There's FAA reauthorization, and everyone thinks government uh, funding and the farm bill are probably getting punted until after the election. This is the last train leaving the station, and right. that's where Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't really have any leverage to push her demands. She made a series of demands, Chris, that didn't exactly add up, including, by the way, the Hastert rule. Yes, they are still calling it that, the majority of them. Yeah, because I saw on the, her, like, entire speech this morning on Dylan Burns channel, she was going off how, like, Johnson wasn't doing, like, literally every single, like, batshit, far-right insane thing that can, Republicans wanted. Because Karen Green, I don't think you... Oh, that's right. You don't realize it because you're an idiot, and Johnson's only 99% of an idiot, but you don't have the fucking numbers. <laughs> you, you can't get what you damn want. That's why... Johnson, at least, is smart enough to realize that that's why he doesn't try it.
God, you're stupid. Majority principle, which she didn't have anywhere close to a majority of the majority for this vote, which a number of her colleagues noted as well. Mm. Uh, no, I'm I, not going to get into What was that? I, 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 nice quickly. I missed that. I was saying, because you didn't, you only saw a little bit of it, like where they were booing her and such, but I saw all of Karen Green's um, speech on Dylan Burns' channel earlier, and mm -hmm. she was going off about, like, Johnson needs to go because he wasn't doing, like, the Republican, I mean, what the far right demands and such. Like, she went for, like, every single list and all that, and it was, like, the same BS, you know. She did. And I was saying, like, you don't have the numbers to do that, Karen Green. That's why. Johnson knows that because he's not 100% an idiot like you. Yeah. Because <laughs> at least, because at least he has a fucking brain. Like one pixel size, yes, but you have no pixels. Mm -hmm. Google it. Uh, no. the, 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 the Donald Trump's uh, weighing in on this was hilarious because everyone, of course, says they have his Marjorie Taylor Greene on fighting for Trump. Trump waited until after the vote had happened. <laughs> After it happened, and then said, vote to motion to table after a lot of gobbledygook. I find actually funny that Trump actually supported saving Johnson, which I find a little odd. And hey, that also means Karen Green went against Trump, so... That's We're a little odd there, so Karen Green. You, because, you're a well, simp as much as you're a pootler, like, so what the hell? The MAGA yeah. party doesn't care that You're supposed to do whatever Trump says, the remember? the guts of spending legislation. Mm -hmm. On the whole, oh my God! The fact that doesn't care that the fact much. that that orangutan might be it's not one percent smarter than you too. Oof! That it once mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. can't get that amped up about it. It means his um, yeah. Candidly, Chris Trump made himself his IQ irrelevant is to this, you know, motion to vacate is, drama. Is, is this like began about six weeks ago when Marjorie five. Taylor Greene first wrote this out on a piece of paper, kind of dangled it in front of Mike Johnson, said, "Don't do Ukraine aid. Don't do Ukraine aid." And Mike Johnson called her bluff and said, "I'm doing Ukraine aid. Come after me if you want." And Trump never weighed in. Yeah, Karen Green, we know you want Ukraine to all be genocide. Trump is very we clear when he wants to be, when he yep. really cares but about. Sorry, we're not all evil like you are. border deal. He makes it abundantly clear. That Republicans need to do this or there will be consequences. He didn't do anything like that when it comes to, to Mike Johnson and Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, Johnson went to Mar-a-Lago, did that pilgrimage some weeks ago, and Trump stood with him and, and praised him. Yep. He praised her as well. Uh, but there was never a, a, a very clear indication from Trump as to which way to go, which is why Republicans <clears throat> uh, voted as they pleased. Saul Kapoor, thank you very much. So, yeah, we got to see about that. The Democrats actually saved Johnson. And Karen Green had her first meltdown before we get to our second one. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling that would happen. But yeah, we gotta see about them actually saving him, though. I think it's interesting. So of course, like I said, I Democrats so. better make it abundantly clear: you're on a short mm -hmm. leash, and you're gonna do what we say. And if not, yeah. then we'll kick you out when Karen Green comes back around for second time. They yeah. better make that abundantly clear. So we'll see on that. Because knowing how much of a short, I mean, how much of a um, anger she's always in, she'll probably try and do it like tomorrow or something for all we know. <laughs> mm -hmm. all right, so now that we've covered what first got her angry, I think we should now get into the next thing that got her angry about. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Let's see Kyle's video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie Taylor Greene has been losing a bunch of friends. Um, you guys know what's been happening with this Republican Civil War. First, it was Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert. They took out Kevin McCarthy, them and maybe like six, six to eight Republican Congress people. And um, that was a huge deal. And it was a huge rift inside the Republican Party. Yeah, like I said earlier, the majority of the Republicans in the House did not want to get rid of McCarthy. Look at the votes we covered, too. Almost yep. all Republicans voted against it. They're not, they don't want to kick out their guy. But just enough Republicans mm -hmm. went with the Democrats to kick him out. And they were still very angry about it. And that's why they were like immediately like, nope, we're not even dealing with, doing this again with Johnson. Nope, nope, and no. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. now they kind of settled on Mike Johnson. Hey, we all kind of like him. He's got a foot in an establishment camp and the MAGA camp. So, you know, what are we going to do? Let's We'll go with Mike Johnson. He's the fallback. Well, now Marjorie Taylor Greene is playing the role that Matt Gates played against Kevin McCarthy. And she's like, I'm out this, out yeah. this motherfucker. She had Thomas Massey and Paul Gosar on her side for it. Um and she was ready to pull the trigger. However, now her own caucus is fucking turning on her ruthlessly. In fact, they interviewed on CNN a bunch of these uh, Republican Congress people and asked them what they think about it. Watch this. I really don't give a rat's ass what anybody up here says about what I'm doing. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is finally ready to make good on her threat to force a vote ousting Speaker Mike Johnson. I voted for well, this is back at the beginning of May, so this is yeah. like a week ago now. Over a week. Conservative. 
But mm-hmm. once he became speaker, he has become a man that none of us recognize. But there's a problem. Mm. She doesn't have the votes. Bless her heart. Hey, remember, we keep telling her this, but does she listen? No. I uh, mm-hmm. think this is um, uh, all about wanting more attention and not producing actual results. For us. 98% of us find it disgusting. We're tired of the chaos. We're tired of the anarchy. That was a Republican congressman saying, I think they said, like, 98% of the Republicans in the House are against her. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you only got, like, 2% then, at most. You're not going to get it. You're not going to win unless you get all the Democrats on your side. It's the wrong move at the wrong time mm-hmm. by the wrong people. This is a distraction, and I think it's, yep. it's All Republican congressmen, people don't say this. Margin, Johnson lacks the votes to stay in power with GOP support alone. But Democrats plan to save him in next week's vote. Which they this did. This is unprecedented that somebody's foe in leadership, the leadership of the Democrat Party, would offer to save the leader of the Republican Party. Top Democrats praise Johnson for cutting a series of bipartisan deals, including advancing $61 billion in aid to Ukraine, even though it enraged Mm -hmm. the right wing. It's time to end this chapter of (laughs) pro-Putin obstruction. It's a shift from almost seven months ago, when Democrats voted with eight Republicans to make Kevin McCarthy the first ever speaker ousted on the floor. Kevin McCarthy, you guys voted him out. Why not? What's different now? You know, I think what we saw um, with uh, former Speaker McCarthy was um, he wanted to blame Democrats uh, the entire time. Yeah, I I don't know if we even covered it when we covered um, McCarthy getting kicked out. That was actually a stated mm. reason why Democrats said they voted to kick him out because he basically blamed them for like everything that was going on at the time. They were like, yeah. oh yeah? You sure about that? Hold my beer. Let's get you ready you too. I disagree with... Uh, I guess Johnson isn't as completely ways, stupid. Um, but uh, no, he, uh, he lived up to his uh, commitments to put this bill on the floor. But liberal Democrats are objecting. I certainly will not be uh, voting to support Mike Johnson. We can't continue to do this uh, every time they want to... And yeah, there were a couple Democrats that did know, not um, support him, vote against Johnson him, too. Johnson has the support yeah. of the GOP, but it wasn't enough. Matt Gates, who led the charge to oust McCarthy. I think in an election year right now, it, it probably doesn't portend it too well. GOP critics agree. Really? I really support that. Gates, I now all of a sudden you're against because of an election. Uh, where you haven't had conservative leadership. Uh, I, I don't mm-hmm. think the timing's right for that. But Republicans worry Green's effort will hurt their chances in November. We have to understand, this is not a junior high school reality television show. Oh. Everything that we do in the House of Representatives should be in the best interest of getting Donald Trump re-elected. This guy right here. Look at his here. tie. Oh, my God. So, anyway, the point that they're making is... Look at how Trump's face on his Green tie. A lot Dude. of people on his tie. Wow. It was Thomas oh, Massey, and man. Paul Gosar. Ugh. That's it. Now, by the way, a quick point on the Democrats. They, they're so dumb to save Mike Johnson. They're so dumb. Because it's not like they're Hey, Kyle Raisin, here we go. They're not. Mm-hmm. To them, they look at it as like, hey, you gave us Ukraine funding, and we all did Israel funding and Taiwan funding, and that's all we need. Like, what the... If you're going to save his ass, motherfucker, you need to have him be like, here, uh, let's have a vote on $15 minimum wage or something, paid family leave, something. I mean, maybe there is. We all know you had... They're going to save him and get nothing out of it. Like, like guys, there's... Like, you might not realize it, but a lot of stuff they, like, agree to, it's going to be, like, a complete secret. Like, there... Yeah. Because remember, like, Johnson for months was blocking, like, all the aid and all that stuff. Yep. And such. Six fucking months. Yeah. They, a lot of people think what finally broke the, um, I mean, finally was the last straw is they got him in a room, like, like the, um, um, foreign intelligence committees or whatever, and they actually show him what, what would happen, like, to Ukraine if they don't get the aid soon and stuff like that. And by the way, here's a I devastating think it finally fact. Scared him there was, a, there was speculation, there's a rumor that if they try to oust, uh, if they try to oust or if they do oust Mike Johnson, um, that more moderate Republicans are going to, they're going to step aside. They're going to step down. And then Democrats will get the majority in the House. That mm-hmm. moderate Republicans are so fed up that if they actually kick out Speaker Johnson, they're just done with, with politics. They're just stepping aside. And then that would hand over the majority. And guys, we already saw that did happen. Because remember, we were confused about the number last time? With like, mm-hmm. it, it, it showed in the view when they showed the, um, the House representatives. There's 270 Republicans, but four seats are vacant. 
So that's why it's 213 to 212. Republicans have the one lead, like you said. Because yeah. it so wouldn't explain properly last Democrats time on the one thing. Try to save Johnson. So yeah, guys, Republicans only have one seat true. lead. Yeah. Just or, one tie. I don't know what happened I mean, in that situation. It was a the tie in the House. That rumor's not true, which but then two leave, leave just Democrats so have it. And then we know Hakeem Jeffries will almost guarantee to be a speaker. But to save him is absolutely crazy. That would be hilarious. Um... She's mm -hmm. feeling mighty fucking lonely, because even Matt Gates, who was the original like crusader, yeah, they're not conservative now. Oh. Well, guess what? M uh, Mike Johnson's acting just like McCarthy did, and now Gates is like, well, yeah, it's okay, it's fine. He's it's probably too here. busy to make it look sexually like assaulting we women like all mm -hmm. against us if they if they see us. And guys, remember, I, I don't know if we cover this. McCarthy actually said some time ago that the reason why he was ousted was because he would not oh. stop going after the um he would not. And the um, sexual assault investigation or whatever on gates. Yeah. Or under under underage stuff or whatever. That's he says yeah. that's the reason why he was kicked out. Doing yeah. this again. So Marjorie Taylor Greene goes on Steve Bannon show and she she says the following. But and you're right, you know, Fox News called me an idiot. That was oh, literally boo, boo. Fox called me an idiot. idiot. But what I've done is expose what was already oh, happening oh. in the dark. And I think I think the beautiful thing about it is is that Democrats have to come clean. They were controlling Mike Johnson anyways. He was uh, giving well, them well, everything. no, but Why now hopefully we policy? do. Fully funded. Fully funded the Biden Department of Justice. Fully funded oh, the FBI. Oh, <laughs> funded the Department Amazing. of Justice. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Guys, let's see. I remember the stuff she was crying about. Let's see. She cried about the Ukraine aid, of course, because she wants Ukraine to die. She cried about um the invasion at the border, which is hilarious and stupid. She cried about... um. Full funded mm -hmm. um, post birth abortions, all that stupid bullshit lies. Uh, what was the oh, fund an FBI and go on like all the stupid shit you could think of. That's what she was crying about earlier They're in saying, her speech. She's saying, well, if Democrats save him, then that's an admission that he works for the Democrats. But again, as I just pointed out, Democrats aren't getting anything out of keeping Mike Johnson in there. They're getting nothing. Well, we don't know about that, like Kyle. We should wait a little bit before you say that. Right? I wish. I wish the Democrats would all vote to oust his ass and then some Republicans step down and then the Democrats end up, you know, taking control. But you heard her. Like, Fox News is calling me an idiot. Well, yeah, everybody's mm -hmm. calling you an idiot. Oh. Because you're an idiot. Hey, are you offended by being called an idiot, Karen? You're a cunt. Yeah. How about that mm -hmm. one? Because you're an idiot. What she, okay. Like Here's the what ultimate she doesn't dumb understand. blonde stereotype Anybody too. who's speaker, yeah. are, they're going to do the and same like thing. And like I said last week, the same we know like how Johnson badly did. you want to be in a Japanese Any, made okay, outfit in all and these be Kutler's maid McCarthy? and get raped really? and beaten uh, and you would love it. Mike and he Johnson? would get, be able to get well, away with it over there. following the money. Mm -hmm. They are beholden to the establishment. Both the corporate Democrats and the corporate Republicans are oh. beholden to the establishment. Ukraine was always going to get that money. Israel was always going to get that money. Taiwan was always going to get that money. The idea that even if you replaced this speaker with Speaker Marjorie Taylor Greene, guess what? There would have eventually been a vote on Ukraine. There would have eventually been a vote on Israel. There would have eventually been a vote on she, Taiwan. If she was speaker, she, been a vote can on you imagine how bad it would be if she okay? was speaker like you said last agrees, time? The money agrees. <laughs> I, I can only imagine how badly she would try to squirm and try to make sure none of that so, stuff happens. Look, in a sense, <laughs> yeah. it's like okay, well, and then she'd be, and then she would get McCarthy voted out right afterwards, which like is interesting. They did well, it with McCarthy. It would be Austin hilarious. So it feels like it feels like it's all per personality driven and spite driven, right? And it does. What we Gates expect? Do. That's Karen Green. Gates, She's a spiteful world, bitch. He, he would also be saying, "Ask mm -hmm. Mike Johnson." He's because evil. One of his big issues was the Ukraine funding under McCarthy, right? And Johnson does the Ukraine funding, and I was like, it's okay. So it looks like Gates is realizing, hey, that didn't work out well for us last time. My numbers went down. The Republican Party numbers went down. It makes us look unserious. Maybe that's why Maybe he Gates to, got 1% brain, question Green mark. The opposite mm -hmm. and equal kind of hypocrite. I was against Alistair Maybe McCarthy if I do something again, maybe Alistair I'll Johnson. get kicked out look, with my sexual is, assault minors in investigation. Yep. And they don't know how to be uniform. Or um, George and Santos, not his real name, lying is... about literally everything. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> now that you mention it, him and Bob Menendez's um, investigation fix supposed to happen recently, too. Yep. You guys actually do all agree on virtually everything, right? You all agree on virtually everything. But the things that are going to end up getting passed and the things that are going to get the vote are the things that the entire establishment agrees on. And uh, she's not going to be able to change that. 
She's not. No. She's fighting a losing battle What's in every match. Just Karen Greed from trying. Because let's say you follow through. Let's say you oust just uh, Mike Johnson. Well, then probably the Democrats end up taking and over. And the orangutan um, and Putin. Uh -huh. But even yep. if you succeed, uh, let's Jinping. say the Democrats don't take over. <laughs> Maybe well, we should use that against them in the future. For the upcoming <laughs> Republicans pro Chinese. Like <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 that so. would be so fed and it would be hilarious. They're calling you an idiot because you kind of are also, um, Remember, and there's also those far lefties who claim, we just, we're coming into a new unipolar world, but you really know what they really want is a mm -hmm. unipolar world under China. Mm -hmm. Matt Gates was an idiot before you the last time because McCarthy and Mike Johnson are the same fucking guy doing the same fucking things. And this thing is on autopilot. It just is. And look, I would have more respect for what they're doing if it truly was like a principled crusade based on policy. But I just, I don't think it is. Of course it's not. I really it's think not. it's more about personality and spite mm -hmm. and clicks on social media and look at me, look at me. She can cry about Ukraine you know? aid and whatever, but the reality is she's I'd just like to see her Democrats cup. fight the Democrats who are the problem. I'd like to see the hostile take over the Democratic Party from the left flank where they stand it's like, up same like we're never same funding Israel. Gates that's with McCarthy. Right? Had nothing to do but with anything. He just didn't want to get. They don't have that in them because they're little McCarthy bitches. To take it there. Yeah, as the yeah, Republican base here, he, or the Republican, yeah, he did, these yeah, Republican politicians like Marjorie Taylor yeah, Greene. He's a pedo. And, uh, what's his he's face? Because he's uh, a uh, um, sort of document. They're certainly not bitches. File. Yep. Like they got balls, but they're also totally fucking empty-headed and don't know what they're doing. Right. So it's a mess in fourteen different ways, as you can tell. And we're joined All every right, guys, moment of it. Yes, loving it. So yeah. We gotta say about Karen Green continuing to be a cunt as always. Uh just seditious Karen Green being seditious Karen Green. Can you, Karen, Karen, can you please just resign, go home, go on Twitter all day, be a K Twitter Karen or Facebook Karen or whatever, and just be a Pootler Trump simp over there, and we can laugh at you there, and you now have to ruin everything for everyone else. Can you do that, mm -hmm. please? Oh, that's right. That's too much to ask for, apparently. Yeah. <sighs> so, well, yeah. Fucking it. stupid idiot, as always. And please, mm -hmm. people, get her ass out this November, please. We can't have her ass back. That would be like the ultimate yeah. karma, like Bulbert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I lose the butt hole. Fucking idiot. All right. So, now, yeah. on to the next topic. And the next one, so to cover those ones, will be... J.K. Rowling is too obsessed with trans people. Guys, you uh, this neo-Nazi she is. Guys, you you might find it hard to believe, but Elon Musk said she's going too far with this. Elon uh, Musk of all yeah. people says you're too far. You should be embarrassed to hear that. Elongated mm. Musgrave is thinks you're too yep. far. Wow. Mm. So yeah, 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 guys, she's. She's just getting worse and worse and worse. Like, I can't believe it. She's getting worse and worse and worse. I wouldn't be surprised in the future her starting denying the Holocaust and now all of a sudden that could be the worst thing she's done because she, it's getting insane. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably not. Yeah. I'm surprised that it's like, wow. Man, what? And she, is now, she is now an actual turf neo-Nazi. Yep, it's insane, guys. And you're going to see how obsessed she is in a bit. Oh, boy, she's obsessed. She is, like, obsessed with trans. Oh, over the past several Star years Wars, or so, like J.K. Rowling has become <laughs> so consumed by her obsession oh, with hating trans people that it's basically the only thing that she ever tweets about. We're talking all day, every day. Trans people live in her head rent-free, and she is incapable of not thinking about them. And it's gotten so Just bad like that even fellow transphobes are starting to notice, and they're reaching yeah. out to her to gently get her to maybe change the subject because... It's kind she of a bad look. She can't help For example, it. in response to someone that she was arguing with on Twitter she's about trans people, which is how I imagine Facebook, she like spends most of her time these days, yep. she posted Karen this Green. unnecessarily long and superfluous screed about what a woman is. And nearly a month after she made this post, Elon Musk decided to unexpectedly chime in with a banger that nobody expected, writing, while I heartily agree with your points regarding sex and gender, may I also suggest posting interesting and positive content on other matters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, even Elon Musk thinks that she's gone too far. Her obsession with trans people 
is a little bit too much. When Elon yeah, Musk, guys, the person with perhaps the Turk, least amount of self-awareness on the planet, thinks that you should maybe reevaluate your priorities, that's when you've gone too far. And to be clear, Elon Musk is no friend to trans people. But I think as a fellow transphobe, he recognizes that her inability to stop tweeting about them every single day kind of makes all transphobes look like deranged freaks. And I mean, they are, yeah. but she is so but, much more unhinged like, really and obsessive than other transphobes that it's just, it's kind of ridiculous, you have, you have, like, right? Every, and Elon Musk is correct about that, out. right? In that limited Don't sense, he's right. A broken clock can be right you. twice a day, How? but everyone kind of yeah. expected her to respond with Why? the most unhinged Why? response Why? imaginable Why? because Why? she's Why one of the most thin-skinned people on the source. planet who does not take criticism well. But for oh, some reason, enough. she decided- There's enough. There's, there's enough Harry Potter fans who have become, who have become, um, not trans super homophobic and transphobic oh, no. because of jk rowling uh, yeah it's the harry potter franchise is basically hemorrhaged in half at this point oh my god because there's, a lot of it, because there's a lot of um as i said there's a lot of fans who despise it there's another group of fans who are like and well including me where yes we hate what um she's become but there's certain things that she did really well in the um, Harry Potter story, and that and oh, the whole school stuff was good. Was one of those. You follow Harry Potter? Um, yeah, not as much. Yeah, I do. I did not know that. I guess this must yeah. suck for you, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's annoying. It is so frustrating. I guess the only thing equivalent would be is if Satoshi Tajiri came out as a turf and a neo-Nazi. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. And probably don't oh, know, Tajiri is the creator Japanese, of Pokemon. Well, well, you, well, you probably get the, well, he's Japanese, so there's yep. probably, you can pretty much assume he is racist. Yeah, and he is almost 60, guys, too, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. But he, he hasn't said anything yet, like so the, we can't some assume. He probably, some of them he probably doesn't know about, but you can definitely see him being, like, super racist. Yep, but thankfully... He has kept his mouth shut, so we don't know. So ignorance yep. is blessed. Take Elon <laughs> unlike, Musk's unlike, advice. I'm not joking about this. So she responded yeah. saying, ha ha ha, just realized that I missed being advised to share more positive content yesterday. Imagine I'm reading this in a British voice. Sharing this about my writing life, which happens to have been published today in the Sunday Times, should in no way be interpreted as me doing as I'm told. But you're literally doing exactly as you're told. So how else should that be interpreted? And I I expected her to respond saying oh my god how dare you say that a woman should be doing something else it's just but she's like oh okay yeah that makes sense of and guys, all the people funny thing elon is she musk done, like, got oh, you're through misogynist. to her in this she limited sense but of course i mean that's not to like, say that she's that joke all the time, but she actually did about say trans that. people because after that she went back to tweeting about them that's non-stop she like is. she usually does but since she at least temporarily took elon musk's advice well, he decided to pay her a compliment, incorrectly writing that J.K. Rowling rocks. Now, he wrote this in response to somebody posting about her life story and her struggle with poverty and depression and domestic violence. But here's the thing. We all have our own She's battles, nice, right? Yeah. She's not unique in her experience. The question is, are we able to learn and grow from these struggles and ultimately become better people? And the not answer her, with Harley. respect to J.K. Rowling is mm -hmm. an unequivocal no. She's a terrible person, and she spends an unhealthy amount of time I punching down on my- I wondered, I wonder if she's like the richest woman in the UK. Do you know about that? Uh, she's probably up I'll there. Find out. Or at the very least, in, in our lifetime, she's probably the most influential find woman out. in Let's the UK. Find out. At the very least, she's probably the most influential woman in the UK in our lifetime. And she's like throwing all of that away. Because she's a neo-Nazi turf. It, it's, yep. it's, it's amazing. I'm trying to find out here. Marginalized people who just want to live their fucking lives. She could do what other rich people do and travel the world, buy yachts and mansions, eat fancy food, even, dare I say, help people less fortunate than her, but instead well, she's she spends- She's only 795 million. Which means she's already lost a quite a lot of money. Wait, what was she ranked? 34th. She's only at seven hundred and about eight hundred million. What the thirty fourth most richest woman in the UK? Yeah. Wow, that is a lot less than I thought it would be. Jeez, I thought she was a billionaire at least. Hmm. Man, 
I guess being a turf, even on turf island, apparently is expensive. Oof. A ridiculous amount of time tweeting vicious or maybe it's things us about trans that people fun you so much, from the comfort like how of her castle. Is for us. And we've talked about her mm -hmm. harmful rhetoric before, but here's a quick rundown for those unaware of what she's said about trans people in the past, courtesy of LGBTQ Nation. Trigger warning, people. There's a lot of transphobia in here. Quote, yeah. in 2019, she first revealed her anti-trans views by tweeting her support for an anti-transgender activist. Since then, she regularly spreads fear-mongering misinformation about how trans women would potentially commit assaults if allowed in women's restrooms. Of course, here we go. The uh, women in the, no, men in women's bathroom crap. Like, shut up. Shut up. They, you know, if people wanted to assault you in a bathroom, they could do it either way. Done. Like, you really think, oh, men can't be in here, like, they're not loud, like, legal or banned or whatever. Like, nothing's gonna stop if they want to sexually assault you. Like, just mm -hmm. stop. Stop. He's written stop. long stop. essays denigrating trans women, repeats baseless conspiracy theories about kids being coerced into transitioning, of course. and promotes transphobic merchandise mm -hmm. vendors on social media. Additionally, Rowling has come out yeah. in support of conversion therapy for trans people oh and claimed my that gosh. almost There's everyone agrees. There's an agreed. actual yeah. conversion therapy for trans? Are yeah. you? I've never heard. Just oh like my there is gosh. For gay people, and just like there is, just like there is for gay people, and there probably is for. People for oh people who like God. people of different races. I've never heard of this conversion therapy for trans. Let's get that shit banned mm -hmm. immediately. Oh my God. Agrees with her, even as famous people mm -hmm. that oh claim that almost everyone agrees with her. Oh, uh, we we uh, I, us two, we two make the uh, difference on that one. We strongly make the difference on that one. Mm -hmm. Mike too, and a lot of the Harry yep. Potter community would beg to differ too. Especially the yep. actors in the movies who are against he her. She has worked with Ooh, condemned yeah. her words. She also published a book about a man who wears dresses in order to kill women. She recently donated seventy thousand pounds, about eighty nine thousand dollars, to a transphobic Scottish women's organization to oppose trans inclusive course, governmental policies. Cunt, always, so she yeah. is literally mm -hmm. using her wealth and her platform to spread dangerous conspiracy theories about trans people, and it's not like she's just tweeting into the void. She is a very famous person, and what she says matters. It has has real world consequences but in the process she's also destroyed her reputation and real that relationships is a with people that Ooh. she's known for a very long time for example she lashed out at daniel radcliffe and emma watson recently in response to someone saying that they owed her an apology because they condemned her transphobia to which she responded saying quote celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard-won rights and who oh, use their platforms up. to cheer shut on up. the transitioning of minors can <laughs> save their apology and, and no you're there's no transition of minors can you shut up you turf oh my god it's for traumatized detransitioners yeah, and vulnerable off, women relying on single sex be. space go go back to go back to talking to your turf neo neo-nazi girlfriends about how you want to put trans people in gas chambers or maybe you need to shut up and go write more books instead <laughs> mm -hmm. oh and sh She's saying we have bullied people who detransition. Transit I mean detransition is a very small amount of people. Like it's yep. not a big thing like you all think it is. is. So like in that 1%. single tweet, you can see how much misinformation yeah. she's spreading, not just about trans people, but their allies who she knows in real life. She's seriously accusing Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson of trying to And for all of you don't know, those are two um two actors in the Harry Potter movies. Destroy yep, women's Harry rights. Potter and Hermione you Granger. I guess you saw all the movies since you're a fan of it. Yep. I only saw the first one on DVD in 2001. That was that's my extent of Harry Potter. You honestly Potter. believe that, J.K. <laughs> Rowling? You actually believe that they're against women's rights? They support trans rights to the detriment of women's rights? That's just that's deranged. a tough mind for you. And they're not yep, mutually exclusive, the right? Civil rights are important across the board. Nobody's free until everyone's free. But I mean, you could see why there's this problem. Like I said, guys, and I all love she that about is they're not people. offering her an and, apology. Yeah. Nobody's and apologized. That's all she but can yet, think about it's people. telling that she's I guess entitled when you can't write enough when you to have believe that block. she's actually owed yep, an apology. Exactly. For what? But I mean, I think that that tweet is really interesting because it gives us a lot of insight into her mentality. Now, if this you like haven't Matt followed Walsh her downfall obsession. when she initially yeah. came out as anti-trans back in 2020 or so. That, um, that, yeah, but also remember, at least Matt Walsh is being like honest now and admitted that he is and he basically admitted, yeah, he's a Nazi. Oh, yeah, I think um, Surf TV did a video on that. Maybe we yeah. need to check that out. Maybe we should go look for it. Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe, who has been a longtime LGBTQ plus ally, 
publicly denounced her in an op-ed that he wrote for the Trevor Project, which is an organization that he's worked with for a very long time. And he wrote, transgender women are women. Any statement to the they contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender <laughs> people <laughs> and goes against God all did. advice given <laughs> by professional healthcare associations who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. Now, ever since then, she's had this ax to grind with him and she felt like she oh, was wrong oh, by him oh. because he spoke out against oh. what she said but it wasn't personal he just cares about trans people period and he felt oh, compelled to speak up him. given his history with her He's and he explained this in an interview an with the atlantic in the i'd worked with the trevor anymore. project for 12 Ugh. years and it would have seemed like i don't know immense cowardice to me to not say something radcliffe says when i raised this subject quote i wanted to try and help people that had been negatively affected by the comments he tells me and to say that if those are joe's views then they are not the views of everybody associated with the potter franchise now i commend him for speaking out because it's not easy to publicly criticize i feel so bad for you harry potter fans yeah. <laughs> i feel so bad for you guys <laughs> people you know and care about but he didn't want to be silent because he felt like that would be an implicit endorsement of her bigoted views but more importantly he didn't want to be silent because he's just a good person who cares about trans people and felt compelled to combat the bigotry that she was spreading but because of this she's gone mm -hmm. full cry bully and is making it seem oh as if fuck. he oh my God, and his harry potter co-stars are all traitors for biting the hand that fed them because i guess well, they're required to pay deference to her forever since i guess she's responsible for their rise but he responded to that mm -hmm. notion as well the I mean, if anything, they might be responsible for your rise, because I'm sure a big part of the yeah. Harry Potter f like fandom came from the movies more than the books. Mm-hmm. Because, like, <clears throat> how popular are the Harry Potter books compared to the movies? Probably minuscule in comparison. Mm -hmm. Just like how, uh, just like how, no, like, the books. Do I think the books? Hang on, let me look up. Because I like how it is for anime, like. Anime, when they come to America, make manga popular usually for that series. It's like that's why that's usually happens with anime when they get translated. It's the, then the manga comes like soon afterwards. It's which is funny because in Japan it's the other way around. And it continues during the blowback, he was often thrown in together with his Harry Potter co-stars Emma Watson and Rupert Grint, who both also expressed their support for the trans community in response to Rowling's comments. In the British press, particularly, he says there's a version of "Are these three kids ungrateful brats?" that people have always wanted to write, and they were finally able to. So good for them, I guess. Never mind that he found the premise simply wrong-headed. Joe, obviously, Harry Potter would not have happened without her. So nothing in my life would have probably happened the way it is without that person but that doesn't mean that you owe the okay. things you truly be what? A moment. believe to someone else for, rough guide here. for your entire life and he's exactly right. This idea that he is somehow indebted to her for the rest of his life is absurd. That movie also owes its success to him and his co-stars who brought those characters to life. As I just but this out. lingering anger that she has with Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, as well as a number of fans that she's lost, kind of explains why she's so obsessed with trans people, I think. My theory is that she kind of blames trans people for her bad reputation rather than her own bigotry. And she's probably oh, tweeting obsessively oh, about them because she's seeking vindication. She wants to prove to everyone that she's actually the one who's right and everyone else is wrong. The studies sure, are wrong. Sure, Karen, and the sooner sure. that she proves how right she was about the big bad trans menace, the faster her reputation and relationships that she's lost will be restored in her view, probably. I'm just kind of guessing and speculating about what she okay. believes but i think that she's doubling down on the transphobia because she's incapable of being introspective and refusing to take responsibility for her own downfall but i mean we are what we say are we not like she has with her full chest yep. endorsed transphobia and came out as a turf and you know Definitely that the response to that is not going to be positive right i mean it might be in your mm -hmm. own bubble but for the most part i don't think anyone's even pointing out that she Dabbles in the Holocaust now, out in Vosh, I think. Yeah. I think that doesn't look good for all of you other progressives, no, especially not. you, Mike. 
right. that covers this. I haven't heard you said anything about that. This yet. is your legacy. Maybe he will. That's how cool. you're going to be remembered. And rather than just like accepting that she's wrong and immoral, she's on a mission to prove to everyone that they're wrong and she's right. And as I a result, to to she keeps manager. digging a deeper hole for yeah. herself. But that's not the path to redemption. Renouncing her own bigoted views and working to undo the, the damage that she caused is the true path yeah. to redemption. And the yeah. good news is it's not actually too late for her. It's never too late to do the right thing. Even some Republicans are realizing it was wrong for them to mistreat trans people who are vulnerable. Yeah. For example, she's a gender right. affirming care ban for trans youth was actually defeated think. in the state of Kansas oh, it's, oh, it's right. after two Republicans who previously <laughs> voted for that bill <laughs> changed their minds and ultimately joined Democrats to vote against it. So the two Republicans in question are Susie Concannon and Jesse Borgen. And the question is, why? They voted for this gender affirming care ban and then they had a change of heart. What led to this? And put simply, they had a change of heart. They listened and they learned. Susan Concannon is gonna explain that in this following clip. We hear of bullying and ask authorities to make it stop. We hear about mental health, about suicide and ask why. We're not listening to the impacted youth. Government involvement is not the answer. I voted for this bill in the past due to concerns about the surgery. With further consideration, this bill is vague beyond the surgery. These decisions belong between the team of professionals and the parents. The youth need our help, not government overreach. To all who have reached out, I hear you and vote to sustain the governor's veto. That, my friends, is what we call growth. These two Republicans listened, learned, and realized the impact that they were having on this vulnerable community. You love to see it. So, I mean, if two Republicans can have a change of heart, what's J.K. Rowling's excuse? The answer is, is she, has no she has no excuse. She can either reevaluate her discriminatory views and try to learn and grow and stop being a hateful bigot and also try to undo the damage that she's caused, or she can keep rage tweeting about trans people all day and be remembered as an isolated, bitter bigot who let hate consume her. Or, or mm -hmm. option number three, you shut the fuck up and just go back to writing books and make shit ton of money. Exactly. Like how you yep. did with Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Like, Harry Potter is like one of the biggest things in the UK in the last 20 years Most, or so. Uh, it's the best selling, it's the um, best selling book series in history. Oh, sold really? More than 600 million copies worldwide. Yeah. Wait, 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 how many? Over 600 million. Oh my god, that doubled on One Piece, which is the biggest manga of all time. Holy crap. Yep. I would yep. like to, I might have to look and it up, the but yeah. Harry Potter movies. Over a couple billion, I know. I know a couple billion. I know that at least. I think the last few made like a billion 700, each. 783 to 1.3 billion. Yeah. Most of them hover around, 900, around 850 to 950 million. Yeah. And then the death was part two was 1.3 billion. Yeah, I know. Um, I think like every movie was in the top 10 every year when they came out. Like they made yep. a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, if she does care about her own legacy, which it seems like she does, she should opt for the former rather than the latter. But yeah, we gotta oh. say about her being a fucking stupid neo-Nazi turf Karen that even elongated Musgrave is staying chill out. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty... Brother, so then I'm like, jeez, that's, that's, that's an, embarrassing. Yeah. So yeah, I, so, I think we can both agree on this. Roland, if you're, you need to stop being a turf, but we're sure you're not gonna change your ways whatsoever. So I guess, like I said, mm -hmm. do the next thing. Do I say, just shut the fuck up, get off of Facebook and Twitter, and just go write books. Do that for the rest of your well, life, and maybe people will forget about you being a turf. We won't, but maybe others yeah. will, and stuff. And maybe mm -hmm. you'll do a little bit better in the world, and such, but yeah. you, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. Just And also, Mike, it's how dare you not bring up that she denied... How dare you, Mike, then bring up that she denied the Holocaust recently. That was pretty bad, too, on your part. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> you... <laughs> Like, you gotta stop. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop, Roland. You gotta stop. This is sad and pathetic. My yeah. goodness. Three straight Karens we had to deal with. Oh, yeah. boy. So now, what next? That will be... The... The John Oliver, Malcolm Moore, and Chris Hayes defend student protesters <clears throat> from people who want to mass shoot them. 
All right, guys. So this has been going on for a little bit, but we're finally going to talk about it. Over the last like month or so, there's been a whole bunch of protests at colleges across America that are supporting the Palestinians and all that. And lately, they're being cracked down on. Now, I have a little bit more nuance on this from what I've seen like online stuff. That's not like I'm not mm -hmm. fully 100% on board with the protesters and their actions, but what what people, what the cops and all of them are doing is also unacceptable too. And of course, there are so many evil pieces of shit on the pro-Israeli side that are stirring shit up, like the far right would do with BLM years ago. Yeah, and doing I remember a whole bunch that. Of stuff. So, and of course, the media is lying about the protesters being like all like anti-Semitic and stuff like that, like the classic oh, stuff that we've been dealing with for years. Yep, oh, that's Hamas, too. all terrorists, uh, that, yep. that now, Zionists, I'm, that we need to do mass shootings against them. Now, unfortunately, I have seen a, some a, quite a bit of protesters actually do support Hamas, which is very unbased. But that's not all the protesters. You can't brush everyone with the same brush. So, yeah. So, let's see. Um, Chris Hayes, who we just saw earlier... And John Oliver destroyed these idiots. The way that so many prominent voices have focused so exclusively on colleges feels honestly a bit decadent to me. Like we're doing a, a paper doll version of the conflict because the actual reality of what's happening in Gaza is so horrific, unceasing and high stakes. It's more enjoyable to argue about what college kids are doing than to confront the human misery and destruction that's happening in the actual conflict that is, of course, the source of these protests. The only crime I can see that 65-year-old tenured professor committing is maybe sneaking a Brazil nut from the co-op's <laughs> bulk section. Also, that woman is not only mm. Jewish, she's a professor of Jewish studies, yet she's being brutalized by police supposedly there to keep Jewish people safe. So I think that the tide is officially starting to turn when it comes to this narrative pushed by mainstream media about campus protesters. And that's because these pundits got a little bit too sloppy in their desperation, right? So as a result, the propaganda has fallen apart and it's now starting to blow up in their faces. Now, just to give you a couple of examples of the most outrageous examples of these mainstream news pundits smearing these protesters, we have CNN's Dana Bash disgustingly comparing these protesters who are protesting a genocide, by the way, to literal Nazis. Now, ironically, of many no of these surprise, students that she's called Nazis ones, are Jewish violent. themselves. Nonetheless, Inside that didn't violent, stop her from lying usual. about them. Now, on top of that, MSNBC hosts have compared these student protesters to January 6th insurrectionists and yeah, Charles sure, Nazis, sure. And the sure. brought on a police Inside officer to fear monger yeah. about the bike chains used by protesters that the university literally sells. And of course, there's the terrorism book that the NYPD supposedly found, which they pretended was some sort of a how-to guide when in actuality it was just an academic book about terrorism obviously of course we expect it was found on a campus what do you shit? expect yep. i mean we're That's seeing cool. idf levels of low effort propaganda at this point but generally speaking a lot of the things that mainstream media pushes with regard to these protesters you know there's a lot of gray area they leave open questions and it requires yeah. additional research but a lot of the bullshit they've been peddling is just absurd on its face and when your lies become so hyperbolic and fantastical there's a certain point to where it becomes counterintuitive right where we don't just doubt the message itself because it's so absurd Absurd, we doubt the messengers too. And we're at that point with regard to oh, campus we protest propaganda. Point. And on top mm -hmm. of that, millions of people are now seeing a counter narrative from the likes of John Oliver making fun of their lives and on his John massive Stewart television too, show. And also video, Chris Hayes is reminding everybody that college protesters yep. have a history of activism. So this is nothing new. They're not terrorists. And historically, student activists have been on the right side of these issues. But on top of that, we have Seattle rap artist Macklemore, who just released a viral song called Hins Hall. And <sighs> he is choosing to un Equivocally stand in solidarity with not just the student protesters, but Gazans who are under siege right now by Israel. And he also called out other artists for not saying anything about this issue. And I can't play the song for you, but I do want to read you some of the lyrics because I think that what he says here is really important and it's helping to dismantle the bullshit that we're seeing from politicians and pundits. So here's some of the lyrics. Actors and badges protecting property and a system that was designed by white supremacy, but the people are in the streets. You can pay off Meta, but you can't pay off me. Politicians serve by any means. APAC, KUFI, and all the companies. You see, we sell fear around the land of the free, but this generation here is about to cut the strings. You can ban TikTok, take us out the algorithm, but it's too late. We've seen 
seen the truth, we bear witness, seen the rubble, the buildings, the mothers and the children, and all the men that you murdered, and then we see how you spin it. He continues, where does genocide land in your definition? Destroying every college in Gaza and every mosque, pushing everyone into Rafah and dropping bombs. The blood is on your hands, Biden, we can see it all, and fuck no, I'm not voting for you in the fall. Undecided. And Washington's going to be yeah. violently triggered so these by that. are incredibly <laughs> powerful. It resonated very deeply with me. Because and um, it CIA really dawned on me after so listening to this song. That See, Vosh, if you're like... I, I, I think we need it as a topic on how to actually get like people who don't want to vote for Biden to potentially vote for him like me. Because Vosh and all you guys... You're, you're doing it the wrong way, I'm telling you. You're not going to get yeah. people on your side. They're losing the propaganda mm -hmm. war. I already and you know what? thought that you know, mainstream I media was man. losing the propaganda war with respect to their efforts to manufacture consent for Israel's like genocide and our support for said genocide. Yeah. But it dawned on me after listening to this that they're also losing the propaganda war that they've been waging against these student protesters because up until this yeah, point, we've dealt it was with this overwhelming for like the last and it felt like we kind of shit. lost when yeah. it comes to that. But no, Ten they're years losing of being the propaganda war. Sem sem and um, and this song, by the way, and hasn't even officially been released on Apple Music or Spotify, mm -hmm. but yet it's already gone viral just on Twitter alone. As we defend and that's really important because when it is officially released, how many more millions yep. of people and are going like to hear this message and then question what they've been hearing in out. mainstream media, question what Biden exactly. has been doing. I think this is really, really significant here, and credit to Macklemore for doing this. Now, if I didn't mention this before, the name of the song is Hins Hall, which is the name that student protesters gave to the building that they took over at Columbia University, and they named it after Hind Rajab, which is a six-year-old Palestinian girl who was murdered by Israel after she initially su survived tank fire that killed all of her family. She was the sole survivor, and then they killed her. Just brutal mm -hmm. stuff so the fact that her name is getting out there because of these protesters because of macklemore that is so but important now mass. on top of that macklemore said that he'll be giving all of the profits mm -hmm. from this it's song okay. to unrub and he even got praise from tom yeah. morello from rage against the machine who says it, honestly macklemore's hens hall is I'm the not, most not, rage not, against the machine yeah, sign since rage against the machine and that is an incredible compliment to give to macklemore from tom morello now it might seem like a single song and a couple of new segments are insignificant but i promise you it's not. It's very significant because this is how culture changes. You know, I'm just one person and there's a lot of us in independent media who try to debunk these mainstream media narratives. Oh, we've but, been doing I mean, it for 10 be years honest, for crying I can out debunk deal. these lies about bullshit. protesters every single day on this yeah. channel until I'm blue in the face. But having a large platform doesn't automatically translate so into meaningful influence or cultural power. Yeah. Yeah. So when people yeah. like John yeah. Oliver or Matt Lamore say what I'm saying, that actually does make a really significant impact, right? It moves the needle, and I think that that's important. And I say this because as much as we don't like to admit it, our opinions are heavily influenced by other people. It's human nature, right? So the media is very much aware of this fact, and they're able to effectively ascribe our default position on any issue to us by simply setting the narrative and framing and elevating the salience of a particular issue. So, I mean, when Dana Bash on CNN compares these students to Nazis, that might sound suspicious to the average person, but odds are they'll just accept it at least a little it's bit until they hear a counter narrative, is which is stupid. why mm -hmm. these counter narratives getting out there is so crucial right now, right? Which is why people like John Oliver and Chris Hayes going John against Stewart. the grain I'm is so fucking people. important right now. But I do yep. want to get back to the Chris Hayes clip that we saw at the beginning of this video because what he said is particularly important. He said the media focuses on what college students are doing because it's easier to do that than to confront the actual reasons why these students are protesting in the first place. That yep. is very very true and that's what we have to keep in mind because israel is now beginning their offensive in rafa and an already bad situation is about to get exponentially worse and if you've been online like me the images are you can't describe the images right seeing the images they stay in your mind it's shocking we're talking about little kids who have Let's been just murdered say it's by as bad Israel, as seeing their people. lifeless bodies and their yeah. parents and their well, siblings grieving. Course, I will never get that out of my so head. They actually enjoy now, seeing them die. what I want to do is mm -hmm. play a TikTok for you that gives you a visual of what Gazans have been experiencing. There's nothing graphic about this, but it kind of demonstrates what they've been dealing with since the start of Israel's incursion into Gaza and how they've oh, basically they've been, been cornered now out. into Rafah. So just mm -hmm. watch this was, and then yes, we have more to talk about when we come back. Yeah. 
Remember when they told everyone to move down south? It's gonna be safe down south. Watch. That is like a video The crazy game part is, so I showed I you guys this 135 argument. days into this genocide. We are 80 more days I remember into this, this genocide. I think I remember this guy. Bosch covered him too. He's, he's like an idiot on the Palestinian side. Witnessing the same thing. Like, why can't you actually use actual Close footage to, 40, to make your argument? Like, you use like video game footage and make it something like that. Yeah. They're still under the rubble. And now everyone's here, down in the south, in Rafa, and they're bombing Rafa. There are over 1.5 million innocent Palestinians that have been displaced in the south of Gaza, in Rafa, right here. Over 600,000 of them are children. The aid, the food, the waters, all in that area. And now Israel's indiscriminately bombing this area. Now, mind you, all of these people are living under tents. They're indiscriminately bombing this area, dropping leaflets from the sky, telling them it is no longer safe to be there. They have to leave. Where are they supposed to go? Literally, where are they supposed to go? Die. There is nowhere That's else for Israel them to wants. go. They want you all to die. How can you look so at this visual demonstration and not call this a genocide, mm -hmm. not call this an ethnic cleansing, not call for a ceasefire? Yep, so we need you now more than ever to keep posting, happen. keep sharing, and do not stop talking about Palestine. Man, I just can't figure out why our government wants to ban TikTok so bad. Oh wait, they actually confirmed that we were right all along and this is really just about the pro-Palestine content that they don't want us to see on there. So I mean, at least they're no longer pretending that this was about protecting our data or some bullshit. This yeah, was always about crap. stopping us from getting the lie. truth, yeah. right? But Israel has officially began their offensive into Rafa and dozens well, of innocent civilians, well, including children, have, um, have already been murdered. and. We can't get official numbers at this point because the capacity for people in Gaza to keep track of the death toll has been eliminated. So we don't even know. We see anecdotes, but we don't get a bigger sense as to what's really happening. We just know that it's destruction, right? Indescribable uh, destruction. And this comes after Hamas agreed to a ceasefire deal negotiated by Egypt, Qatar, and the United States that would have facilitated the release of some Israeli and Palestinian hostages. But Israel said no, because they don't want this to stop. Netanyahu personally needs to drag this out as long as he possibly can in order to stay in power and protect his own ass, because the second that this is over, well, the country is gonna want an election and he's gonna lose that election. He's gonna lose power and, and possibly hopefully be for fucking good. in trouble. Legally speaking, yeah, for all of his crimes, not always just against Gazans, but because yep. of the crimes that he's committed with regard to corruption in Israel. But as a result of this offensive in Rafa, it seems like the Biden administration is finally maybe choosing to pull the plug on them, at least for now. Yeah, Political we reports, it too. quote, the Biden administration is mm -hmm. holding up shipments of two types of Boeing-made precision bombs to send a political message to Israel, according to a U.S. official and six other people with knowledge of the deliberations. While the Biden administration has not formally denied the potential sale, it is essentially taking action through inaction, holding off on approvals and other aspects of the weapons transfer process to send a message to Israel, a U.S. administration official familiar with the process told Politico. The official, along with others, was granted anonymity to discuss sensitive internal deliberations. Now, this story was first reported by Axios, and that Politico article that we just read corroborated the details of that initial report from Axios. And Politico is confirming that the holding up of these munitions isn't due to supply chain issues or anything like that. Rather, they're holding it up for political reasons, i.e., because of Israel's offensive in Rafa. Now, someone from the White House basically said, hold, when they were about to be shipped out. And the State Department isn't saying why that's happening, but we can kind of put two and two together and assume it's because Israel defied the United States and maybe after a hundred times defying them in the course of seven months, Joe Biden is finally saying enough is enough. Now, it's a and good sign, fair. but before you give Biden mm -hmm. credit- Because I'm gonna tell you, Biden, this is gonna be the reason you're gonna lose the election. I'm telling you yep. right now, if you want to win, you have to force this to end now. I've been saying it for months now. Exactly. Hold. Because if this delay is only temporary, then this is really much ado about nothing. But if this is actually the beginning of the end of the United States supplying weapons to Israel for genocide, that's a really positive development. But at this point, it's too awesome. early to tell. And I say this because Biden has demonstrated that he can't be trusted on this particular issue. But I genuinely hope that he proves me wrong. However, I'm skeptical about that still, even with this news. 
Because the State Department was expected to release a report on whether or not Israel is using U.S. supplied weapons in compliance with international humanitarian law. And it's obvious that they're not. But if the United States confirms that they're not, then U.S. domestic law would prevent us from supplying Israel with more weapons. So it logically follows that they wouldn't delay this report unless they still intended to send Israel more weapons, which is why I say we need to wait and see. So our government is already complicit. The question is, will they continue to be even more complicit throughout the most destructive phase of this genocide yet? Mm -hmm. That's still an open question. But keep in mind that this yeah. is he what the media doesn't two, want to talk about hence why they're hyper focused on college plan. students this he is confirmation of that so regardless of what they weeks. say keep your eye on the ball and don't stop talking about the genocide in gaza because, because if we remember, stop talking about the, the genocide first, in gaza um, heart, in the first stage of the genocide they were killing as many people as died on average every day during the holocaust and the armenian genocide the the propagandists and mainstream media win. So yeah, we got to see about mainstream media actually finally going against the um, bullshit arguments that they make. Yep. As I see, it didn't go over to the correct slide on OBS. Thank you for that. So yeah, what Israel's doing is wrong. End of discussion. No debate on that. Now it doesn't mean that what Hamas did on 10-7 was okay. Mm -hmm. It was not. You gotta yep. have nuance on this. What, what is what happened to Israel does not justify the genocide that they're doing. It needs to stop, yep. and that's the fucking end of it. All right. Yep. So now on to the next topic. And that is Bernie breaks his silence. Biden is alienating young people. Yep. Like we we're like I just said earlier, and Bernie, being the sweet old man he is, and has a brain, unlike the sleepy Joe, actually knows this. Then he's going to talk about which pisses off people. And I worry very much that uh, President Biden is putting himself in a position where he has alienated not just young people, but a lot of the Democratic base. Senator Bernie Sanders was on CNN to discuss these campus protests, the ongoing <sighs> mass atrocities being committed in Gaza, as well as how this relates to Joe Biden. Now, I'm going to get to three clips here. The, the way that especially he gets to or, or discusses Joe Biden's role in this. I have to imagine, but, I mean, Bernie knows Joe Biden. I, I'm sure they have conversations. I'm sure he's tried to get through to him privately. But the fact that he is going public with a statement like this, I have to imagine he's having a tough time getting through to the obvious ideology that Biden has on this topic in, in a way that he doesn't really have for a lot of issues. Because he's too busy taking naps Biden up to now has largely it. been able mm -hmm. to is is very malleable in the sense that if public polling shows a certain thing, he will then do something. Yeah. Um, to also, little update: uh, Pennsylvania has now um, got Trump slightly ahead. Ports. So, which For is example, really really bad. Of, of, because uh, cannabis Pennsylvania or, um, usually student debt cancellation. Like usually, there are things um, that in the last few has kicked the um, winner of the election. You hear that, eight. sleeping Joe? He's been moved on. Also, but uh, Biden's only two percent ahead of Minnesota. Again, you better be paying attention, at you old man. Yeah. On Israel, he is unmovable up to this point. So, the hope yeah, here, this, I would at think, this stage is we a message like this now, getting through Trump to Joe Biden, or at least by a considerable margin, you have three hundred and twelve seats. So, I'm going to start here with um. Uh, his first comment. Even if PR, Obviously, even America if, has um, Pennsylvania goes blue, uh, he's got to get two of no, two, no, 17. The big ones he's got to get is he's at least got to get two of Georgia, Michigan, Arizona, or Wisconsin. He's got to get two of them. And then I uh, will do the lowest two quickly. So then he just gets them. And then he's, and even then, if he gets Wisconsin and Arizona, he's then got to get one of Nevada, Michigan, or Georgia to hold on to power. Massive leverage because of its very strong, full yeah, throated shoulder to shoulder, shoulder awesome. all those words, alliance <laughs> yeah, with Israel, yeah, and all the billions horrible. of dollars that it sends. But do you think the students are reacting to the fact yeah, that Georgia their government uh, does not seem to be using any leverage? 
Yes, of course they are. Look, the it is one thing if a terrible tragedy or a terrible war takes place in some part of the world where the United States really has no involvement. That is not the case in Gaza. The United States of America has historically and is right now, the legislation that you talked about, we're talking about over 19 billion more dollars going to Israel, including 10 billion dollars in unfettered military aid. So of course, the United States government has the right to say to Netanyahu, guess what? You're not getting another nickel unless you let humanitarian aid go in, unless you stop mm -hmm. the imminent famine, which we you are know, seeing. You know, Democrats, you could have had this guy as president, you know, back toward in 2016. Yeah. solution. Yeah. When you are paying think, the bills, if you, went you call said that piece of the shit, Hillary. Has we the could United have States Bernie government done that? No, it's not. And I think students and the American people understand but no, that that is very idiot. wrong. All right, mm -hmm. so for anyone that's been following this, this is a very obvious point. But it is one that is often not discussed in the coverage of what is going on, especially in the coverage of these campus protests, because there's often this, this retort or this criticism, oh, why are these students so focused on Israel? It's because the U.S. government is funding Israel as they are doing this. Uh, doing this. It is because their universities, We're their finances are intertwined give a with shit, Israel though. as hmm. Israel is committing mm -hmm. these acts. This, pro, this is why the focus is where it. it is. So, you know, the, one of the dumbest criticisms I've seen <laughs> since the beginning of this is, why aren't, why aren't people protesting to bring the hostages home? Uh, As if what? That's part is, of the ceasefire, you dipshit. Are they the ones funding? Mm -hmm. And also, the let's be honest, the hostages, most of those hostages what is are the probably dead now. There? What would be the point? A At least 30 of them are. What your government and a lot of it is, is because of Israel killing them. Not so, to mention, yep. this yeah, context is incredibly important. Israel for that. It is the and Netanyahu Israel's government its own desire are the ones to get that are all rejecting the ceasefire. A significant, considerable number it's of already been accepted by the other side. And, and I did a previous video on this, where there's several, several instances of a ceasefire deal being on the table, and it is Netanyahu the, being the one that is rejecting it. There's even a case where the families of the hostages came in Haret? to the Knesset and, and were trying to, Always should believe were them. essentially protesting Netanyahu, trying to get him to support the ceasefire deal, and he wouldn't do it okay. because I'm it is in his that, political so. interest, if he wants to remain in power, to continue Ooh. this ongoing bombardment as he's being propped up by far, a far-right faction. So... To understand here, you know, why this has not ended, why why the hostages aren't going home, the way of it's because of the going. Israeli government. Now, let me get to the next clip here. This is a really good... Uh, Bernie gets into connecting the history of student oh, protests and also yeah. his, his own experience Wait. with that as well. Where do these protests fit in the history of American oh, student I'm protests? Oh, I can't hear a thing now. You Look, hear Bernie? Uh, and I, I must tell you that as a young man, uh, I was involved. Uh, in civil rights demonstration, I, I was arrested in, in taking over the administration office at the University of Chicago uh, because there was racism and segregation going on at that time. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, if there had not been protests and sit-ins and demonstrations, uh, we would not have made the progress we have made in this country in combating racism uh, and ending uh, the apartheid form of government that existed in many parts of the country. Uh, if there had not been millions of people, mostly women, coming out into the streets and saying that they are sick and tired of being second-class citizens, they want a right to control their own bodies, we have, would not have made progress uh, in the struggle for women's rights. Uh, if we had not had demonstrations saying that we've got to end uh, homophobia in America, we would not have made the progress we have made. Demonstrations is what, and, and the right to dissent, the right to protest, that is what the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States is all about. That's what, in fact, makes you a free country. More important context. And I got to give credit here to CNN's Christian Amapur because not a lot of other shows or, or anchors are allowing the space for this sort of reality to get out there, to, to, for this context to get out there. This is very clear. And it has been wild to see just the level of propaganda that I'm seeing from politicians and media. And of course, you know, I'm used to seeing them spew garbage all the time. But the level of propaganda focused on vilifying these student protesters when it is so clear that they are correct.
when their demands are very clear and how they relate to previous student movements. All of this is very obvious now. You don't have to wait 20 years to see who's on the right side of history. It is very clear right now. It's clearer than it's ever been. This is Bernie back in the 60s when students like him were being vilified for standing up for for human rights. Remember Hillary stands kept lying and about yes. that? You could maybe use the excuse back then that yes. it's nice to be Hillary back in access to information Hillary was again. Were the ones If lost. you grew up very sh Hillary stands the ones who need to be shamed for voting for her. Sheltered, she, they lost very siloed the in your own, in your own suburb, and you didn't Careful, interact with different would viewpoints differ. or different kinds of people, <laughs> different races. Yeah, because they're idiots. Then maybe you would grow up just not understanding this sort of movement, this sort of fight for civil rights. There is no excuse now. The information's right in front of us. And it's, you know, if you want to see what the students are fighting for, you can go look it up. It's on their sites. All of this is very clear. If you want to understand the conflict better, the, the information's out there. So to be on the wrong side of history now, there's just no excuse. Which, which goes again to, sh like, a lot of these politicians, these, this media, they know. They know they're full of shit. But it is their job to, to push a certain line because at the moment, a lot of these protests are challenging the very corporations that they themselves at these large media corporations are intertwined with as well. So they have a vested interest to ensure that they are vilifying these protesters. And this is, again, a common theme throughout history. Very rarely do you see, uh, you know, whether it's the the uh, the massive media, like mainstream media or most politicians, very rarely are they on the correct side of history at, from the start. It, it takes protests like this to move society. This gets to Joe Biden and how Bernie relates what is going on now back to his presidency and the election. Well, in terms of his campaign, you know, I am thinking back and other people are making this reference uh, that this uh, may be uh, Biden's Vietnam. Uh, Lyndon Johnson, in many respects, was a very, very good president. Domestically, brought forth some major pieces of legislation. He chose not to run uh, in 68 because of opposition to his views on uh, Vietnam. And I worry very much that uh, President Biden is putting himself in a position where he has alienated not just young people, but a lot of the Democratic base uh, in terms of his views on uh, Israel and this war. So I would hope very much that from certainly a policy uh, point of view, from a moral point of view, uh, the president stops giving a blank check uh, to Netanyahu. Uh, and I would hope, and hope that they understand that from a political point of view, uh, this has not been helpful, quite the contrary. And of course, Bernie is exactly right. Based on all the data we are seeing, based on how Joe Biden won in 2020, with a lot of young people coming out to vote. Look, I have to imagine that Bernie's having or, or has had these private conversations with Joe Biden. He, he has worked with him very closely on, on a variety of issues, especially as it pertains to, to workers' rights. For him to go on CNN and put this message out there, to me, says that Biden is not listening, that Bernie's trying to have this conversation and Biden simply does not care. he's not listening, he's evil. This is, he's too busy. you know, he's we want to message out uh, uh, like this publicly <laughs> and you, you know the guy yeah. you're talking about. That's typically what this means. And screaming is that into there's a, a reason why he's saying this publicly, why, why he's Netanyahu, willing to criticize Biden in this way. He thought he could get way. away with that without having his country revenge bombed and, into prehistory. Focus the conversation new in a way that I really haven't seen, again, any other politician uh, discuss, you know, the comparison to uh, the Vietnam War in, in terms of, or how, how it relates to the presidency. This is, I mean, this is the reality with Joe Biden from Truth Out Here. Polls have found that public opinion has shifted dramatically against Israel since October, as Israeli forces have killed over 34,000 Palestinians with heavy use of US weaponry, which by the way, this is an out of date number because there is no longer the infrastructure in place in Gaza to count the, the amount of people that have either been been, um, that are either casualties or injured in uh, what's happening. So th this is, these are, this is an estimate from, I believe, early March. We haven't really had an update since then. But 
going on here with only 18 percent of democrats approving of israel's siege of gaza and 75 percent disapproving according to a 75 percent of democrats disapprove of what israel's doing biden whoa, that's whoa, whoa, whoa. your party when 75 percent of your party says no on this issue you have to say no as well last month and i'll get to that yep. date in a second here as well Young voters in particular are opposed elections. to Israel's massacre. A January it's going to be the reason you lose election, people, and you have no one to blame but yourself. Israel is committing genocide. And I don't want to hear it from idiots like Bosch and all that, especially when I'm voting for an old man. Policy in the Middle East mm -hmm. has I'm still going to be blamed for it, don't you know? Of course, even though they should be the ones blamed for supporting this shithead. What, they're going to vote for Trump, who's who might be worse on this? They're just not going to vote. They see two options who both are supporting these mass atrocities. And they don't want to vote for either of them. And the lesser evil vote is just not going to work with these people on this nope. issue. It, it's just not going to work. Right. Right. Ooh, Biden's. So Biden this is, is not somehow on, this starting is not on... to come back in Michigan. Somehow. Yeah. You know, like I guess, like I said, like the only reason he'll win is too is also because Trump has worse situations. As I keep pointing out for, yep. like we've been pointing out for a year, people, despite all yep. the problems we've been shitting on Biden, like this video. Trump's in a worse spot. That's why I still think after all this, I still think he's going to win. On young voters. This is not on, mm -hmm. on voters generally. This is on the administration to the make a, a major he's shift get, he's gotta get back. in how but Biden's they now are gotta jump in uh, and start going about and this. Continue campaigning and that in major shift would be because Pennsylvania is slipping funding. to Trump. At the very least, have some conditions on it. Because right now, it doesn't look like, it looks less like Biden's helping Netanyahu and, and more picks, like Netanyahu is um, running the U.S. government. That's how this and is actually appearing. And if he picks up Pennsylvania, he can actually afford to lose. And I'm going to try some tests on here. If he holds on the Rust Belt, he's safe. And this he is can a, afford to lose Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, and still st afford to lose two of Georgia and Nevada and Arizona, and still um, get the capture the presidency over time. So. Changes in views on Israeli military action in Gaza by party ID to yeah. approve or disapprove of the military action Israel has taken in Gaza. You see a shift across the board. So even Republicans. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's are, the closest I can get. Their disapproval has March 2024, 30% of Republicans, Republicans oppose what Israel's doing. Like, that's quite a big minority. What worry about, of course, is independents and Democrats. Yeah. 6% of independents are against it. And of course, we said 75% of Democrats are against it. Biden has... Okay. Again, if all you care about is winning an election, which hopefully you care about human life, but in lieu of that, because it doesn't appear Biden cares about human life, maybe he cares about winning an election. Based on this alone. You would alone, think he would care about winning. He is losing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. His own voters. And Barely this, doesn't. Again, is it, this, this will be one of the main issues. Uh, and, you oh, know, no, people no, no, think no, it's, it's going to go no, away don't, by November. Don't. No, no, no. It's not going to be Why one of, it? it's going to be the only Look reason at what's already loses. happened. Yep. Those lives yep. that have been lost yep. are not going back. He loses. This Michigan is, is likely gone at this point yep. based this on what's gonna kill him. Uh, you know, his numbers there and the Arab American population that, that is heavily concentrated there. It, it, that's like that state's likely gone. So there has to be a dramatic shift if he hopes to recoup what, what is ever left and and there's a simple I don't way know. to the, fix the this, hope Biden. Is that you have more politicians force like Bernie Bibi to stop on media and, and yep, force BB continue putting this BB pressure Hitler on and, and do what they can. <laughs> but yep, I mean that's true. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's disturbing just to see. You know, forget about the election. I don't care about the election. I care about what is happening right now, and it's disturbing. Disturbing to see just the the level of destruction this White House is willing to accept. Yep, so what do you guys say about that? You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. You're going to lose, Biden, if you don't. Change course instantly. Slipping. Michigan's not coming back enough, uh, fast enough. Pennsylvania's slipping away. Yep. You're gonna lose if you keep this up, Biden. It'll be all your, not only all your fault, but the fault of the blue no matter who crowd because they're stupid. Yep, and I'm going to be blamed even if I'm voting for him. It, let's go. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait yep. to be blamed again. <laughs> it'll be it'll be, pro, it'll be projection yep. from those pieces. Projection because they're the ones to blame. Yep. Because they and, don't care because they're idiots. And at least, and if he does lose, we're going to plot exactly why he loses. And oh boy, the mm -hmm. amount of crow they're going to have to eat too. Fucking yep. idiots. All right, so now on to the last topic. Lawrence Southern. Southern's horrible... 
anti-feminist trad wife lie. So, yeah, not a really good thing to wrap up on, but, of course, mm -hmm. you, we haven't talked about her in a while because she's not been that relevant lately. Lauren Southern, who used to be a very big YouTuber, and she was a far-right yep. racist piece of shit and such. Yep. She but was, she was, she's the one who um, popularized the white genocide conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. Proponents of that theory have committed terrorist attacks that have killed about 100 people. Mm -hmm. And But, of course, the last few years, she's been, like, quiet and all that because she went... To mm -hmm. do the trad life that she always promoted and such. Yeah. Her family and such. Well, it turns out that it's not going so well for her. And it's to yeah. the point where as much as we hate her, we have to feel bad for her if you if, yeah. if you know what happened. Like she's like getting abused and such, which is unacceptable, mm -hmm. even for a loathsome piece of shit like her. And yeah, yeah this is pretty bad. So Vosh covers it. Unsurprising but very sad, conservative quote-unquote trad wife influencer Lauren Southern discovered being in a traditional marriage felt like being enslaved, and she felt compelled to rationalize her husband's behavior. Wow, really? Is that true? Is that true? Really? Dude, L Lauren Southern was like the poster child of, listen, young women, you don't want feminism, you want to be a trad wife, and hmm... You know what, honestly? Yeah, I guess Southern, some credit that, for it feel right now to have that trad wife boob moment. Face. I mean, is it a bit? Thousands of miles from friends and family, she reports becoming the closest thing to a modern day Western slave. With no income of her own, she had to do everything the lawns, the house, the cooking, the baby care, the university homework. And I didn't know anyone. I His didn't have university the there homework. Was no help changing wow. Diapers. What a piece of shit. There was shit. no help waking up Can't even do your own baby. homework. I'd still have to get up to make breakfast before work. I'd be shaking and nervous for fear I'm going to get yelled at. Then he'd berate her for spending all her time on tasks other than ending, um, other than earning money. How I can she daily earn, that uh, by her own logic, she can't earn money, you dipshit. Because she's supposed to be a mm -hmm. trad wife who stay home all day and does all that stuff. She's not supposed to make money by a lot, that family structure. But I was worthless, pathetic, dead mm -hmm. wet. This is the trad wife fantasy that all, that all the... Like, 19-year-old uh, TikTok girls who are tired of having to work a minimum wage job are fantasizing about. If you guys think that, like, the, the, the like, median experience of a marriage in the 1950s was one of mutual love and happiness, then you're genuinely deluded. Like, genuinely deluded. Okay, even today, in an era of no fault and pretty frequent divorce, marriages are very often not happy. Like, seriously. Think of all of the, like, like other people you knew growing up, growing up and all of their parents. How many of their parents had really f dynamics, like, you know, relationship-wise, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So many marriages keep going purely for their kids. Yeah, and again, I'm not saying marriage is innately bad or doesn't work for everyone, but, like, the trad wife thing in particular is f and it always was. And and people are being duped into it again because of like I mean, 1950s there are women who still do want appliance to do it. advertising. Want to, you see choice. a woman smiling in a painting yep. where she's showing off a new toaster or something. Like you're literally getting baited into uh, cultural regression because there were good advertisement painters in the 50s. Jesus. So they, can somebody link me the full article, by the way? All you do is sit around, and take care of the baby, and do chores. When COVID shut down all real-world public life, her situation became hell on earth. It was, she said, the only time in my life where I idealized dying. Jesus. There are warning signs Your from early on. If I ever disagreed with him in any suicide. capacity, he just disappeared for days at a time. I remember there were nights where he'd yeah. call me worthless and pathetic, then get in his car and leave. But she didn't see them thanks to the simplified anti-feminist ideology she'd absorbed and promoted. I had this delusional view of relationships that only women could be the ones to make or break them and men can do no wrong. So she didn't spot the red flags even as they grew more extreme. He'd lock me out of the house. Lauren, they are pieces of shit men. Like, I don't, I know you don't yeah. want to admit it, but there are pieces of shit men. And I hate to break news to you, but you married a piece of shit. I remember mm -hmm. having to knock on the neighbor's door on rainy nights. Jesus. Because he'd get upset and drive off without unlocking the house. It was very strange to go from being this public figure on stage with people clapping to the girl crying, knocking on someone's door with no home to get into, being abandoned with a baby. Jesus Christ! Walked out of the Christ. house with rain. Can somebody link the full thing so I'm not just reading oh. Twitter screenshots? Who is this about? Lauren Southern. Should we be sad for someone like Lauren Southern? Well, I, I admit that my sympathy is tapered a little bit because she spent years, like, militantly promoting this lifestyle to every woman she could, like, reach. Which, yeah, in like, fairness, wasn't... Lauren, it's it's hard to feel that much sympathy for you when you're just you're just reaping what you sowed. You've yeah, demonized so women who are feminists and demonized women who want to work and all that. Like, you are, like, the conservative stereotype. Like, we make mm -hmm. fun of, like... 
hardcore like radical feminists that make a big deal about women being trad waifus at home and all that mm-hmm. when it's their choice you're the opposite one you ha- you have a complete meltdown over women willingly wanting to work instead of having kids and all that and you yep, said that like, I remember that uh, and, and that they're um worthless piece of shit and all that like the classic conservative yeah. bullshit like like of course remember when fucking Charlie Kirk had a misogynistic meltdown yeah, to, to um Tyler's yeah there we go um, yeah like that was the shit you all did God. and now you're experiencing the worst parts of being a trad waifu like mm-hmm. it is wrong with him and you but you gotta realize to us we can't have that much sympathy for, for you for how you very act many because it was almost mm-hmm. exclusively men who consumed her content because they wanted validation to the idea that women should be subservient housewives but it's still them over so like yeah i don't know maybe we should be slightly more careful and introspective about the ideology that we're promoting you know very much like a i didn't think the leopards would eat my face kind of thing that being said you know i don't know conservative uh, conservatism makes retards of them all so you know she had a turnabout here oh man this is like a whole write-up but as she tells that the nightmare began in earnest when she was offered a work opportunity in his home country of Australia a few weeks after the birth of their baby. She did not want to leave her support networks behind, but he used the political and religious importance she placed on lifelong marriage as a lever to force her to agree. Of Whenever course, I would using do something, religion he would say, I'm to going to divorce you. So feeling she had no other option, she assented. Yeah. He also insisted she should publicly quit work. His work required a high level of government security clearance. She was a right-wing provocateur who had faced deplatforming state investigations and was even banned from entering the UK. Between the lockdown claustrophobia and her husband's behavior, she began to revise her initial willingness to, to leave public life. In part, she told me she hoped it would be, she hoped it would win back his love. He was so much kinder, sweeter, and more pursuant of me when I was this boss babe traveling the world. Dude, there are so many men like this. This is what a lot of men want. They want to find strong women and break them. That's what they like. They see a woman who has like a big, like a job or is a high earner or is confident, and they see that as a challenge because it would be like more rewarding to subjugate them. Then they subjugate the woman and make her like respectfully pathetic, which is what Lauren seems to yeah, be here. Uh, and then they're no longer interested in her because they no longer get yeah, any feeling of power over and, and, her. And like, like this yeah, happens all there, the time, like, you know. When you see her now, how many are like that? Even if it's wrong, you kind of understand why misandry is just kind of accepted these days, especially on the left. Yeah, it's pretty pathetic. Because unfortunately, we don't good track record unfortunately this is a pretty common media trope too the idea of like a cold-hearted ice queen boss babe who ends up melting for a guy and she like quits her job or she like becomes more that of a family almost like woman an a- and the, anime the whole like fantasy bla- being played into <laughs> is like mm-hmm. let me bring her down to my level or or below it you know this is boat lauren not theater blowjob lauren and it was a hand job i think it seemed like becoming a mother made him lose respect for me. It was shocking to me again because the traditional view preached the opposite, that men love you more when you stop working and become a wife and mother. In her experience, though, this was very much not the case. Yep. So a year after retiring to embrace traditionalist domestic life in the right-wing model, she posed, uh, posted her comeback video and began making sporadic media appearances. I remember this video. I didn't really know what was going on with it when it, when it got posted. It seemed like kind of a turn... I don't know. No, wait, hold on. Wait, is that the right video? No, wait, this is the wrong video. This is after COVID, but she's talking about a comeback video and linking the 2019 borderless thing. Yeah, this is the wrong video. They f***ed up here. This isn't the comeback video. So I was confused when I linked it. There was a comeback video at one point with Lauren Southern. It wasn't the... Okay, a mistake by the person who did the hyperlink. Okay. Um, well, mm-hmm. whatever. Never mind the pop anti-feminist idea. The comeback video was when she started doing the, like, enlightened centrism thing, right? That was, that was what happened, right? Like, she was doing the whole, uh, all migrants are terrors on the West, blah, blah. And then she came back after a while. It was this really weird, half-hearted, like, you know, having experienced so much shit, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm here to just have interesting conversations. Like, that, that crap, you know? Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this, comeback video. Why I left and why I'm back. Half a million views. Yeah, there we go. This seems much more likely. And see, her hair is dark. She, she stopped dyeing her hair with, like, platinum blonde. Wait, did she dye her hair platinum blonde, or is she naturally that blonde, and she... This is her natural hair, right? I don't know what her natural hair is. Wow. It is surely true that conservative advocacy for complementary sex roles sometimes ignores questions about women's physical vulnerability and the scope this affords for domestic abuse. No, that's not ignoring questions. Conservative ideology is fine with physical abuse against women. It enables mm-hmm. it, yeah, like, they, every yeah. turn, you know? They're it's anti yeah. It's anti-no-fault divorce. So like, it, it literally every ideological and policy-based level. Like, they, 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 that's, that's we, we not told an her. accident, you know? 
um, uh, control like over women is the point, to listen. You know? Like, oh yeah. man, I, I can't believe that a person who I married for their anti-feminist views is okay with abusing women. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, I, I, okay, this isn't like a liberal article. Conversely, today many self-identified liberal feminists have also forgotten the earliest women's movement was grounded in the sex-specific material vulnerabilities. This is the trans thing. Southern experience firsthand. They're saying like, modern feminists have forgotten that males and females are different. Nice. He would just give me impossible tasks all day, tasks I simply could not finish. It felt like he would almost send me on errands with the intent of having me fail. All of this was, of someone tells me, difficult yeah. to square with her religious yeah, beliefs. She, she would pray by his bed when he was angry with her, hoping that if she gave him grace one more time, he'd realize the depth of her love and be kinder. And if this didn't work, he's she was a piece of to shit, persist Lauren, by way he's not going to treat with any sort of respect. But she discovered it's very obvious from the very start. Into viral bullet points does exactly. not provide any framework for navigating the complexities instantly. of a real world marriage. She thought, she told me, that, quote, as long as I put on the high heels and the lipstick when my husband came home, as long as I cook the best meal, as long as I'm always submissive and say, yes, sir, whatever you want, things will go fantastic. Man, you know what's funny? This is more like porn brained than the most porn brained, like, lefty polycule types. I've ever actually interacted with like literal porn brain like the idea like wear red lipstick have blonde hair wear the high heels say yes sir and the man will love you are you this is literally like cis woman cissification fantasy okay jesus christ yeah this is a porn fantasy like it, it's ridiculous like shoe you know? it's, you're you're you're, <laughs> yeah. you're constructing an entire like relationship dynamic, a relationship dynamic and like model she's like she's a trad waifu remember <laughs> yeah yeah as i said but again there's it's nothing wrong with being. I call her shoe up. I call her shoe up ass, not yep. shoe up ass. <laughs> up around uh, like three lines of conservative dogma, highly fetishized lines. Do you think the trad wife model ever made sense? It's never existed. The trad wife that conservatives talk about today never existed. Relationships in the 1950s were much more obviously economically <clears throat> motivated. Than people like to acknowledge yeah, that's how, now. Well, for the that's moment, how, like the, probably the for, for vast majority of marriages are still today too, economic and mm. stuff like that. History. I'm generalizing, but for the most part, the wealthy married for wealth or power, and the poor married for love. But that started to blur together more and more uh, in uh, when when the social dynamics of the pre-modern world kind of faded away, and you started to enter into an environment where you have to like make up money or die like you literally don't like you there's no longer a community apparatus to keep people afloat you have the nuclear family model so people no longer live together with their families forever and ever right and even then to a large extent like women were married away for money reasons like with dowries and stuff i'm not like i'm not denying that but like i think that people massively underestimate how much uh marriages in the 50s were transactional women wanted to be in a marriage because they literally couldn't open a bank account or get a credit card otherwise like they literally would not they like there's a reason why people would call women who weren't married by like 25 a bunch of different mean names and it was because like that's your job bitch that's your job you get married or you don't get like or, or you're going to like you're, you're you're going to work some like made job and like never like th like that's going to be your life then you get like the small percentage of jobs that are specifically allocated for women um <clears throat> And, you, and you're going to be like a spinster or whatever, you know? But people now idealize it as this, like, conservative, like, gooner fantasy where you have, like, a, a petite trad wife with a tight bubble butt who will, you know, let you spank her when she doesn't cook the meal right or whatever. It's like, fuck, come on. Like, you're, you're gooners. You're gooning right now. I mean, some women you're gooning do like right that. Now. You know, this is mm -hmm. a conservative porn fantasy that isn't really reflective of anything that ever actually happened on a systemic level. And you're gooning right now. You're gooning in front of me. It's disgusting. Again, there's nothing wrong with being in a monogamous heterosexual relationship, if that's your thing, you know, if you must, I suppose, you know, Jesus, excuse me, if you're kinky like that. It seems to me, I tell her, that condensing millennia of religious belief in real-world domestic praxis into viral memes has produced right-wing gender ideology, every bit as oversimplified, dematerialized, and radically disconnected from the complexities as the disembodied left-wing version. Yeah, okay, the person conducting this interview is cucked. The idea that, like, Lauren Southern's, what if I prayed my husband into not beating me, is, is like, equivalent to the left-wing complex, like, okay, yeah. Like, they're still doing the ideology that led to her abuse here. There's no reason to not be progressive. You know, there's progressivism and then there's being wrong. I reject the centrist, like, line on this, you know. 
Well, both well, sides have written, no. Well, there are a lot of progressives that are also wrong. emphasize she knows many traditionalists yeah, and happy, things. loving, complimentary marriages, but mm -hmm. she says it's a fallen world, and her community includes many women whose husbands seem to have been drawn to listicle-style gender ideology precisely because of the power it offers over women. Now, women, w the, the female brain is just very vulnerable to the listicle-style uh, gender ideology. Uh, you know, that's how it is. Those guys want someone they feel like they can definitely control who's never going to leave them who they can do anything to. That's great. I I love to go after guys purely on the basis of they want to control me. I won't ever leave them. They can do whatever they want to me. That's a great, that's just phenomenal. Just really high IQ behavior here, you know? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, can you, can you imagine like thinking this and not understanding that you're, you're like volunteering to be a sheep? Uh, for lions. Ridiculous. In the end, it wasn't Southern who broke the spell, but her husband. Around the time her son was toddling, two family deaths prompted her to arrange a home visit to Canada. Her husband threatened divorce if she went, and Southern tells me she had to sign an affidavit promising to return. Pathetic. Finally, he relented, only to text mm -hmm. after she landed in Canada, declaring that because she'd chosen to travel, the marriage was over. Well, he's doing her a favor there, I guess. Even then, I mean, she still is a good hoped thing if you're her marriage could be saved. Shit. God almighty. Well, I still wanted to make it work. I was texting my husband and calling him, begging to get back together, but he just said, no, I don't even want shared custody. Okay, so he- Wow, you don't even want to take care then. of your kid. He would leave for days at a time without yeah. explaining He's where he shit. had gone. Uh, he didn't even want custody over the children. He was just, he just had another family. Still, it was a confusing time for her. My brain was breaking because to, uh, between two worlds because I couldn't let go of the ideology. I was at a similar age when I fell away from the radical left. Okay, yeah, that, that's the interviewer talking here. I'm getting bored of this. Can we get to the end of this? Some of the most miserable people I've met, in fact, absolutely the most miserable people I've met, have been stuck in this weird LARPy trad dynamic. The happiest people she knows, on the other hand, are just living in reality. Yeah, this is, this is the difference, though. This is the difference between the left and the right when it comes to ideological biases in relationships. The left doesn't have these prescriptions when it comes to being in a relationship. People on the left wing don't wake up and go, um, I must pursue this family dynamic because it is optimized to bring about communism. They don't do that. They just do what they want. You see them in their polycules Freedom. or open Which marriages or relationships promote. or whatever. You but do they're not whatever doing that because they're waking up thinking it's like, you. yes, Karl Marx, this is the only way forward. The West must be everyone. safe. They're doing it because they want to, because they're horny, because because they they want attention, whatever. They're they're honest and hedonistic in a way that's like reflective of their actual values. They're not engaging in this kind of like weird like self debasement by forcing yourself to be miserable uh, by adhering to some totally arbitrary made up gooner trad LARP fantasy. You know that's the difference. There are plenty of people on the left whose um whose whose like ideas about relationships are influenced by their ideology, but it just influences them to feel like they can do what they want. Not that they have to do something even if it hurts them. It blows my mind that they actually exist as right-wingers in private and it kills them. Yeah, no kid, right? Like, you, you'd think, like, this ideology is so stupid. You would think that, like, they would take the... Ma it's like the gay lisp. It's like, damn, don't you know how dumb you sound? Do you really do that? Or, like, the British accent. You really do that shit in private, too? But they do, you know? Would you say tankies do that? No. The only uh, people ostensibly on the left who I've seen engage in this behavior are, like... There are some Maoists who are weirdly uh, Volcel about it, but I don't even know how real that is. That could just be like them being incelish in general, and they pretend that it's a Maoist thing. You know, I, I, I don't really think it's the same. What happens when Shu uh, sees this article? Man, you can give Shu shit as much as you want, but from the get-go, like, at least the impression that I've gotten is that Shu just does what she actually wants to do. She hasn't yeah, really made videos like saying, Shu, like, every chick has to submit waifu. or whatever. And if she yeah, personally choice. wants to be, like, yeah, I don't know, stepped on lunch by some dude with giant boots, like, okay... I don't know. It's not like I don't talk to other. Ch it's, it's not like I can't go on Grinder and find other people who aren't like that instantly. You know, it's it, it's not an uncommon thing to want. You know, but that's different. Lauren Southern wasn't just preaching like, "Hey, it's hot when dudes step on you." Okay, what well, you, you'll find that shit in the left too. Trust me. Go to any Pride. Talk to anyone. Go go outside. Breathe. Breathe air. You know. No, Lauren Southern's crime here or self-crime or whatever wasn't like liking the idea of being submissive to a guy that's fine it was demonizing you know? people who didn't it's want this to do it giant larpy mm -hmm. trad wife thing around it none of that like you can you can do everything that the trad wife relationship is supposed to be about 
but it has to be built in a framework of mutual respect and understanding. And that's what the conservatives don't want. Conservatives, yeah, conservatives don't, don't really care that you wear the pastel, that that pastel dress and the yeah. apron and that you they cook all the meals or whatever. Do stuff. The, co the cooking meals thing is convenient, like you, sure, but what it's really, really about it. is the control now, being over to do it, Not that's sexy where control, gonna be a not consensual control, yeah. not this is a dynamic we've established control, just actual earnest like you are mine you are a slave again not a kinky way please i know that every one of these terms has not been subsumed kinky, by king culture so you're just going to mm -hmm. it's actual power over you in a way willing. that is like genuinely abusive you know yeah. that is the point because like that that is the whole point the, 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 the conservative mantra around, around, around well. that's women, why you know? they like the BDSM Middle East control, and control so is actually held by the bottom or woman yeah. in this case yeah it's it's worth pointing out that an actual um like dominant submissive relationships the commonly accepted because it's correct dynamic is that the bottom is actually the one who holds the control over the scene because they're the ones at the greatest risk of being uh hurt or subjugated or whatever else you know you know uh like you're you're hitting their ass the paddle if they say stop or whatever the safe word is i don't know like that's the thing right but this none of this like trad wife shit this isn't kink culture right this isn't like, let's establish a dynamic where, because I think it's hot to wear a dress and cook for you. If that's if that's your shit, dude, if you're like Het and you, you, you're you like, yeah, I want to cook for my husband. And I think it's hot to like do what he says. Fine, go for Hell yeah, sure. What, I don't give a shit. Go for it. Hell yeah. You're saving the West. Go, go, go have kids. I don't care. But like, again, that's that's like in an explicit agreed upon dynamic. And this is just like abuse. So, yeah, that's really the difference. Who knew that consent could make the difference? Yes, you consent? can, in fact, cook and clean for a man without marrying a white nationalist. Mm -hmm. It is, in fact, possible to, to do this. You know? because because and by the way, the left is like much better works. at recognizing all of this. Yeah, all of this is like, this isn't like a both sides them. thing or whatever, right? Like, the left is infinitely better when it comes to being introspective about and considerate about all of these dynamics. Oh, God. If you ever want, if you ever want like, a real wild trip and you have the ability to, like... Fe conservative vet life doms are like a constant source of comedy in the broader kink community because you basically have guys who just want to hurt women uh with no like understanding of the the dynamic or like any consideration for like it's just like freak behavior you know so they get made fun of a lot they're almost always cons oh we made it any women out there that want to get punched no they wouldn't say it like that even that's too like respectful of the others check the comments oh i don't care i don't know it's really hard for me to draw any conclusion from that story other than don't marry an asshole. Yep, there you go. For for a website called Unheard, where the person inserts multiple digs at the left, obviously the uh, the audience here is going to be like, I don't know, I think that uh, Lauren Southern was just kind of an idiot for... Oh, hold on, I should be clear. I also think this. But my my you analysis doesn't matter. You did marry an asshole. You know, there's a broader criticism yep. of conservative trad wife LARPing that, you know, I've I've sort of laid my uh, my, my criticisms against. I just don't really hear about that many cases where in a left-wing relationship, like both people are left-wing, the left-wing ideology is used as a pretext for abuse. Like, abuse happens in all kinds of relationships, but in conservative relationships, the conservative beliefs are almost always the pretext for abuse, right? Like, the huge, like, imagine being in a relationship where both of the people, the the wife and the, and, the, and the husband are both fascists and then like the abuse is unrelated to that right i know i know i mean it's possible it's just like yeah because like the whole like a huge part of fascism ideologically speaking is about control over women i'm not saying it can't happen i'm just saying i don't think there's an equivalence to be drawn not a real one is it okay to date a conservative no never does Caleb Maupin's abuse thing count? No. For one, Caleb Maupin is absolutely not left-leaning. And for two, that wasn't really, like, didn't have anything to do with his ideology. He wasn't, like... I, I guess you could say that he was, like, using his cult leader kind of status to abuse people, but I don't really think it's the same as, like, in a relationship dynamic, being informed by left-wing values, you're abusing someone as a product of those values. I, it's Again, it's possible, but, like... The, the closest thing that I could really think of would be like, I don't know, imagine if you're like a black husband and a white wife, and the black husband was really id poly and would like gaslight and abuse the white wife about like, like anything I racist. Or like, like anytime <laughs> he did something wrong, he'd be like, oh, so the white person wants to talk over me. It's, 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 it's a good bit. I'm sure it's happened at least a few times, but I, I don't know how common that, you know, like really leaning into it too, you know, like maybe he like hits her or something. She's like, why did you do that? She's like, oh, wow. You, after everything your people have done to me, you're really going to throw a fit about that. White woman <laughs> tears. Why would that be true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's okay. Okay. That's mm -hmm. going to be a.
It's a good, it could be a good good bit, you know, good <clears throat> good comedy bit. Um, it'd be bad if that really did happen, though. It's 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 funny to think about, but it's yeah. Are all twinks racist? Yes. Oh my gosh. So yeah, what do you guys say about Lauren Southern being abused as a trad waifu? Oh. It's unacceptable, but at the same time, mm -hmm. Lauren, you kind of brought it on yourself. So, yeah, uh, I mean, you... what the fuck did you think was going to happen? Yeah, like, so, but it's like I do feel bad for you for ha this happening, but yeah, like you, yeah, you kind of brought it on yourself. Yeah, you kind of you brought it on yourself. But hopefully, it sounds like you left this piece of shit. Hopefully, it's the case. And hope you learn yeah. a valuable lesson. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with being a trad waifu if you want to do that, but yeah. don't demonize other women who don't want to do that. You do you, they mm. do them, we're all happy. And hopefully, you can find someone who actually treats you with respect and doesn't abuse mm -hmm. you and such. But knowing yep. how stupid you are, I highly doubt that. Yeah. All right. So with that, we have finally covered all the topics. And before we leave it off, guys, we have... That's the side. Coming up this June, we're going to start making the PragerU Takedown series. That will be coming up, hopefully, if we do it on schedule in July. So tune in July yep. when the PragerU Takedown special is finally going to be done. So, yeah, see yep. you all next time for episode 103. Yep. See you then.